Hamlin in Fort Collins, Colorado. And the grills have been going for hours in anticipation of the home opener. It's a throwback weekend, and the Rams faithful have brought out their dancing shoes, hoping their team can dance their way to an upset of the 10th ranked Bears of California. A team of playmakers from the West Coast crossed the Rockies in 10 on staying the course against the Rams. In week one, redemption came in lightning bolts against the mighty SEC, as this Cal team proved that it can put points on the board in any form or fashion. Golden State native Jeff Tedford knows the Bears' ascent to the top of college football will have to coincide with a climb to the top of the Rockies. At Cal, they dial one for long distance, as Heisman hopeful Deshaun Jackson has proven to be a game-breaking threat every time he touches the ball. In its past, Colorado State was a giant slayer that backed down from no challenge. Will they answer the bell today on CSTV? Welcome you to Fort Collins, Colorado, where they get 300 days of sunshine a year. And we're lucky to grab one of them on this Saturday afternoon as the 10th ranked Golden Bears from Cal come calling on the 0-1 Rams. And welcome to Fort Collins with Trev Alberts. I am Tom Hart. We get a chance to see a special player today in Deshaun Jackson. He is looking to become one of just three wide receivers in the modern era to win the Heisman Trophy. And Trev, the question, does he have the skills to do so? He certainly does, Tom. I mean, flat out, he's the most exciting player in all of college football. You know, it's a cliche out there. You can hear it. Well, he's a danger to score every time he touches the ball. Well, with Deshaun Jackson, that's really the way it is. I mean, last week against Tennessee, he touched the ball six times and averaged nearly 24 yards. He's been punted to 27 times in his career, and he's had six touchdowns. There's no doubt about his ability. But, you know, the interesting thing in terms of this game, talking to Colorado State coaches, they really think that last week Tennessee defensively made a mistake in terms of how they approached this Cal offense. So many times you get caught up in the guys like Deshaun Jackson, Nate Longshore, and his spread offense. And really, Jeff Tedford in this offense, what they want to do is, yeah, spread you out, but they have a great offensive line, a veteran offensive line, and they want to smash mouth football you with Justin Forsett. Last week, Cal has 230 yards rushing. Tennessee has 111. So Colorado State, their approach is, yes, the passing game concerns us, Tom, but they want to start with that running game of Justin Four sets. Yeah, Colorado State would love to be a smash, smash mouth program once again, especially today against Cal. And as the Golden Bears take the field, they do so facing a Colorado State team which in its history has relished the underdog role, specifically under head coach Sonny Lubick. Cal with the big win last week against Tennessee was a convincing victory against the SEC. So how does Colorado State hang with the Pac-10 today? Well, I think they play the way they used to play in the early 90s, Tom. I mean, this was a team that just loved to establish that run. One of the reasons why they've lost eight straight games is they haven't been able to run the ball. Kyle Bell's back after missing all of last year year with a knee injury last week gets 40 carries I think it's the same game plan I think it's time of possession last week 37 minutes I think they control the clock it's those long drawn out drives 17 19 play drives once you get Kyle Bell established Tom then Caleb Haney can go back and play action pass that's what this offense needs to do you play action pass and they've got a terrific tight end in Corey Sperry a huge game last week that's the key for Colorado State if they can establish the run it opens up their whole play action game then they have a chance in this game as the Rams take the field they do so in throwback uniforms today hearkening to the days of Colorado A&M and the Aggies and now the Rams Colorado State who haven't let the Aggie tradition die would love to start a new tradition of upsetting top 10 teams perhaps turning the clock back to 94 and that historical win against Arizona kickoff is next CSTV Football Nation is brought to you by BF Goodrich. BF Goodrich tires take control. By Burger King, who reminds you to have it your way. And by Liberty Mutual. Responsibility, what's your policy? And we're ready for kickoff in Fort Collins. Tank ranked Cal taking on Colorado State. Two coaches who know about winning as we take a look at the coaching matchup presented by Liberty Mutual. Jeff Tedford, the head coach at Cal, and Sonny Lubick, 
on the sideline for Colorado State. Tedford in his sixth season, he's resumed play calling duties today. And Sonny Lubick in his 15th season at Colorado State, 105 wins, the second winning as coach here in Fort Collins. And the field here is named after him at Hughes Stadium. We're ready to get things underway. And guess what? Cal will receive this kickoff. Jason Smith ready to put it in the air. Brandon Hampton and Lavelle Hawkins set to return for Cal. We've talked a lot about Deshaun Jackson. We will continue to, but these guys, Hampton and Hawkins, can also bring it back. And a great kick at altitude for Jason Smith, and rare in the college game today to see a touchback. And so Cal will start at its 20-yard line. And they start with Nate Longshore under center. Had a great game last week against Tennessee. 241 passing yards, a couple of touchdowns. Very few mistakes for a Cal team which struggled on the road at Knoxville to open last season. And of course, he's got the weapons surrounding him and a great offensive line that we'll talk about in moments. Longshore, a junior from Canyon Country, Canyon High School. The lone back is Justin Forsett. First play, they want to go to the air. Longshore lets it go, and the ball knocked away. And great coverage by Joey Rux, who's looking for a big game today. Tom, you mentioned Joey Rux talking to Steve Standard. They really feel like the young man needs to regroup a little bit. Had a tough week last week. But you mentioned the offensive line. A real key in this game is that Cal offensive line. Big, dirty, nasty. Interesting. You see the backs and receivers. But Lavelle Hawkins, I think, is a young man to really pay attention to. And talking to Colorado State coaches, of course, Deshaun Jackson and Forsett get all the attention. They really think that Hawkins might be the most complete wide receiver for Cal. He's got a touchdown pass in four straight games. He'll go to Deshaun Jackson. First touch, he gets a couple of yards. Once again, great coverage by Colorado State as we meet their starters on the defensive side. Hill, Sandy, Smith, and Nading on the line. Some good linebackers who have plenty of experience. But the challenge, we've already seen him answer the bell once, comes to Joey Rux in the backfield. Yeah, it really does. And this uh, defensive backfield of Colorado State, you see him there. There's Rux, and Clint Kubiak led the team in tackles last year but Joey Rux is a young man we've already mentioned him struggled a bit last week they're going to try to help him play a little zone but they'll also have to play some man at some point in this game third and eight now for the Golden Bears Longshore stepping away from trouble lets it go tackle made by Mr. Rux and he brings down Robert Jordan and that'll force Cal to punt on its opening possession what a great confidence builder for this Ram defense, Tom. You come out first series. Of course, they've heard everything about this Cal offense. They get a little in interior pressure there. Longshore gets to the outside. But once again, Joey Rux making atonement for last week. Two nice plays in the opening series for Cal. Rux committed a pass interference on a fourth and four that kept the Colorado drive alive. The Buffaloes would come from behind it. Win in overtime at Invesco down the road in Denver last week. Andrew Larson gets it away. A high kick, and this is Johnny Walker, and Walker can take it to the 40 and dives out to the 42-yard line. Nice little return by Johnny Walker to get the game going for Colorado State. So much as we've talked about Colorado State, Tom, is time of possession, field position. That's how this team plays. Good job by their defense. Nice little return. They set up shop on the other side of the 40 for their first series. Caleb Haney, the senior from Forney, Texas, would love to see Colorado on the schedule again. He dominated the Buffaloes the last two years. Hit on his first eight passes last week. Last year, he hit on his first 14 passes against CU. They've taken him away from the shotgun. They put him under center with Kyle Bell behind him, and Bell gets a touch, and Bell takes it for a one-yard game. Look at the starters now offensively for Colorado State. A very young line, especially on the left side. Yeah, Cole Pemberton, I think he's a real key in this game. You were talking to coaches, and they said, concerned about that left side, Shelly Smith and Pemberton. He said, you know what? The two young kids graded out better than the veterans. So real key, those two young guys in the left side of the offensive line against this quick, active Cal defense. There's Pemberton, a sophomore from Highlands Ranch, Colorado. Bell, the lone back, missed all of last year due to a torn ACL, which happened just days before their season opened. Another touch for Bell, and he takes it to the logo, a couple yards short of midfield, and that will bring up a third and short for this Cal defense, which had a monster game last week against Tennessee. Had a monster game, and up front learned a little bit about their team. Now Mika 
Kane is not going to play in the game. He had a concussion against Tennessee, so Cody Jones will step in for him. But really, Zach Fallett is the guy you need to keep your eye on. 56. He'll move all over. He'll come off the corner. He's their blitz guy. He's the guy that Colorado State and Dan Hammerschmidt, the offensive coordinator, feel like they have to tone for every play. Third and four for Haney in the Rams offense. Let's it go high and right past his intended receiver. First misfire for Caleb Haney. That time looking for Damon Morton, one of the Morton twins. And that'll call on Jimmy Kaler to punt to Sean Jackson to return. Jimmy Kaler is a senior from North Glen, Colorado. As you see the numbers on Jackson, his first ever collegiate punt went into the hands of a guy by the name of Reggie Bush. Deshaun Jackson stands at his 10. And Sonny Lubick told us yesterday they will kick to him. They follow through on that promise with a great looking punt. Jackson says fair catch. It dies at the one, and it'll go out of bounds at the two yard line. Jimmy Kaler was first team Mountain West Conference two years ago, and he booms a 50 yarder to pin Cal back inside its five. You see Deshaun Jackson there just puts the hand up as if it's a fair catch, gets away from it. Just a great punt, good hang time. Coaches talked about, look, you can punt to great returners as long as you have that four and a half to five second hang time, and that time Jimmy Kaler. No score early on between 10th ranked Cal and Colorado State and the Golden Bears pinned down to their own two yard line. Trev, this is a situation that they love going to Deshaun Jackson. They'll go to him any place in the field, and if they get man to man, you can bet on it. Keep it on the ground. For set. Good breathing room takes it to the five. And that's what Coach Stannard, Steve Stannard, the defensive coordinator, told us that they're really concerned about down and distance certain situations, especially when Cal's backed up right here, maybe second and eight. They'll take a shot down the field, try to catch a defense, you know, worried about the run, get that man to man on the outside with Deshaun Jackson or Robert Jordan, take their shot. Second and seven now for Cal, and out of the shotgun is Longshore. From the end zone, comes near side to Robert Jordan. Jordan brought down by Rux at the 10, and already Joey Rux, who had four tackles last week against Colorado, has turned in three against this Cal offense. It's going to be close here. You see Longshore, just a quick step, get back, get rid of the football, and Joey Rux playing out there a little bit soft, of course, trying to Make sure that he doesn't get by him. Darren Williams comes up. Darrell Williams comes up and makes the play. Good play already out of these corners for Colorado State. Rux and Williams. Rux at the top of the screen now. Williams on the near side. Third and one. Jackson in motion. They give it to him. End around. Trying to get to the first down. Looking for more than just the first down. And he dances out of bounds at the 16. First and 10 Cal. Tom, we were talking with coaches yesterday, the offensive coordinators, of course, with Coach Tedford as too. You know, we're saying, how do you get the ball to Deshaun Jackson? I mean, we've talked about the Wildcat formation, Darren McFadden. He said, well, look, you will never see Deshaun Jackson lined up behind uh, center taking a direct snap. I mean, he's 168 pounds. But there's a way, line him at wide receiver, bring him in motion, getting the ball to the outside. Just a nice job that time by that defensive secondary of Colorado State, not allowing it to a big, be a bigger play. Ryan Holly, the fullback, checks in for Cal in his first and ten. And they keep it on the ground for set. For set wrapped up, perhaps a gain of one. Jeff Horanek swallows him up. And the junior from Atwood, Kansas, brings him down after a gain of one. I just love the play of Jeff Horenic. I mean, just an outstanding player, good instincts, probably not the fastest middle linebacker you'll ever see, but plays with one speed. He's a senior leader, comes to play every day in practice. Just a nice read of getting over the top of that offensive guard and a good tackle. It's an unsung Colorado State defense with guys like Horenic and Mike Pagnotta, the former walk-on from Oregon, at a safety spot. There's a swing out pass, and they're trying to get something going, and still not much to show for it. Javid Best, the true freshman, gets his first touch. What they're trying to do, as they mentioned to us yesterday, Tom, is get all of their weapons involved early in the game. And Coach Tedford said, you know, it's really a nice problem to have as you see Longshore just go back and quick toss out to Best. But he says, you know, we've got so many good, talented players that we have to get them involved early in the game. And obviously, the true freshman had a pretty nice impact in the game last week against Tennessee. Third and two for Cal. 
Two tight ends in the game for the Bears. Hunter wants to throw, looking for the tight end, and a big hit, and the ball's jarred loose. Cameron Moore didn't have a chance. And Daryl Williams had the coverage for Colorado State. Just an outstanding job that time. You see Longshore pumps, wants to go right in the middle of the field, but a diving effort by Daryl Williams coming across the middle, helping out his linebackers, knocks the ball down. Again, another nice stop for this Steve Standard Colorado State defense. The secondary has answered the call here early against the Golden Bears of Cal. Larson, second punt of the day, his first went 50, and Johnny Walker set to receive, standing on his 28. Walker at the 28 immediately swallowed up and dropped by Javid Best, a gunner on that punt team after a 47 yard punt. So Nate Longshore on the phone to the guys upstairs. How do we get it going offensively for the Bears? And Fort Collins, Colorado, no score. Nine minutes left in the first quarter. Tom Hart and Trev Alberts, happy to have you with us as Colorado State goes back on offense. And their senior leader, Caleb Haney, gets under center. You know, talking with Sonny Lubick yesterday, he took Caleb Haney to lunch. And he said, I don't think this guy knows just how good he is, how much talent he has. We watched the Tennessee film. He could be just as good as Eric Gange. And this guy, Corey Sperry, could be as good as any tight end. So that defense for Colorado State stepping up big. Yeah, really. I'm going to go back to that last play. You see Longshore here. It goes back to the middle. See, out of the blue, here comes Darrell Williams, who's interesting. Steve Standard, the defensive coordinator, told me yesterday what we want to do. We call it a box out 3 deep. And what that means is we're going to show Cal man to man at the last minute, drop out into a zone. That time they show Nate Longshore man, drop back into the zone, trying to confuse even the veteran quarterback, Nate Longshore. Gartrell Johnson, the fullback in now as Sperry shuffles into motion. And another carry for big Kyle Bell, and Bell takes it to the 48-yard line. This is a Colorado State offense. You could talk about Caleb Haney, but the offense as a whole, which seems to be gaining confidence with each series. Gaining confidence in Dave Lay, the co-offensive coordinator who came back. Just a nice cutback that time by Kyle Bell. He's the running co-offensive coordinator. He wants to run the ball, establish that run. We talked to him about Kyle Bell. He, he said, you know, Trev, I don't think this kid knows how good he could be. I want him to hit the hole harder. That time he hit the hole well, and it was a nice game. Play action this time. Haney rolls out, finds his wide receiver, fights off one guy as Hanson got bounced off of, and Morton has his second catch of the day. You kind of sense a little bit this Colorado State offense using the aggressive nature of this Cal defense against them. You saw the cutback by Bell. Now, little play action, boot to the outside. Again, finds a wide open Damon Morton, and a nice throw by Caleb Haney. Morton, a senior from Riverside, California, one of a host of Golden State natives on this team for Colorado State, which know that boy, a big win against the home state school could do wonders for their attitude back home. Here's Bell, another first down. His 40 carries last week were the best in the nation, the most in the nation, ahead of 35 carries for Kevin Smith out of Central Florida in their win against NC State. So he gets another chance. Another chance, just a two tight end set that time. They get to the outside, and it's a good run again. And there's Corey Sperry, number 80, right there. Look at that block there. The one thing that Colorado State coaches told us, there's no question about his receiving skills. He has a chance to be as good as any tight end they've ever had here, but he continues to work on his blocking. A nice block that time. And he wants to put it up. Over the middle and a first down grab. Takes it inside the 20 for the first down. See Haney that time, good protection, little play action again. Goes back outside to Damon Morton. And you know, Tom, you can see this thing setting up. Just enough success on the ground. Everything they do offensively in terms of the quarterback position depends on establishing that run and then play actioning off it. Caleb Haney is a different quarterback in the play action game. Second catch, 26 yards already for Damon Morton. 
Another touch for Kyle Bell. And Bell, who missed all of last year with an ACL injury, was really a disheartening blow to this program based on what he did the year before in 05. Yeah, well, I mean, in last year, they just really struggled. I mean, look at the numbers there. Kyle Bell really brought a lot to this offense. And uh, without him, they averaged 3.1 yards a carry and 112 a game. And they found themselves in the shotgun. They'd gotten away so far away from really what they wanted to do offensively. And that's where Dave Lay came back as a co-offensive coordinator with Dan Hammer Schmidt. And together, they've resurrected this offense. Here's Kyle Bell again, fighting off tacklers to the 10 before Zach Follett brings him down. Now Colorado State obviously has challenged this offensive line and challenged Kyle Bell. Good move at the line of scrimmage. And as we talked to uh, Cal's coaches, Bob Gregory, the defensive coordinator, he said the key for us is we just cannot get in second and third and shorts. And so far here in the first quarter, Tom, we've seen a lot of second and third and shorts for Colorado State. Six first quarter carries for Kyle Bell. They want to share the ball a little bit. He's got Gartrell Johnson in front of him. But Bell so far has been the only guy in the backfield to touch it. And here's his seventh carry of the day. And he just carries white shirts with them down to the seven and a half yard line. And remember, as we talked about over the top, Tom, at the beginning of this game, Mika Kane is not in this game. The normal right defensive tackle, 305 pound junior, had a concussion against Tennessee, so he's not playing in this game. And Cody Jones, the sophomore, is in the game, so there are some holes there in that Cal defense. They were a bit dinged up against Tennessee. Rulon Davis in there at end. Five first downs already for Colorado State. They had a seven, they had two 17 play drives last week against Colorado. Bell, his third straight touch, and this one will result in a touchdown for Colorado State. If Cal was looking for a wake-up call, this might be it. Well, Tom, it just set up so perfectly for Colorado State. The defense came out the first two series, did a great job against Cal's offense. It was field position, but that time a wonderful drive, mixing play action pass. Kyle Bell in the middle, passes to the outside. Caleb Haney efficient. That's the Colorado State offense, them long, time-consuming drives. Bell had 10 touchdowns two years ago. That's his second touchdown of this year as the junior from Kingsburg, Colorado, puts the Rams in front. Colorado State up early, 7-0. More big-time football comes your way later today right here on CSTV. Don't miss the second of the action at 6 tonight when the Butch Davis era kicks into high gear. So we've got Carolina and East Carolina coming up later tonight. And you think that's a rivalry game? That place will be packed over in Greenville as they look to knock off an ACC team, one of two ACC teams that Skip Holtz has on his schedule this year. Hawkins at the five. This is Lavelle Hawkins, who has plenty of room to run. Turtles a man and gets to the 25-yard line. Tommy, let's go back to that touchdown by Kyle Bell. You know, we've talked about Corey Sperry and his blocking. Look at it tied in on that top side of your screen. He'll come down and just cave down Rulon Davis that time. A good seal block, and that just leaves an awful lot of room for Kyle Bell. Adrian Martinez getting down the field and getting a nice block as well. Again, that's the Colorado State type offense, those slow grinding out drives. and. I wonder if this Cal offense is awake now as they look up at the scoreboard and see themselves down 7 to nothing. 16th start of his career for Nate Longshore, and he started it 4 of 6 for 18 yards. Jackson on the end around, and here he comes. Cutting back up the middle, a lot of green in front of him. To Sean Jackson with a shake move, and here goes number one. Is he running towards the Heisman? 73-yard sprint for Deshaun Jackson. Well, Tom, I guess those long, drawn-out drives are no big deal. If Overrated. You've got, <laughs> you got a guy like Deshaun Jackson here just 
You show it like you're going to hand off the four set, flip it around to Deshaun Jackson, and that's the whole key. You try to get number one in space. It's the one thing that Colorado State was so concerned about. Got him in space, and the speed is just a killer all the way yards, over 70 yards for the touchdown for Deshaun Jackson. Tom Schneider did not make the trip. Jordan Kay is handling the kicking duties today, and Kay ties it at seven. Well, this guy can get going in a hurry in the vision he had, Trev, to keep it between the hash marks. What a lonely feeling if you're a linebacker and you look up and see number one. Here he is out in the middle of the field, and you say to yourself, oh, no, Joey Rux breaking ankles to Sean Jackson, just the flat-out speed. But again, finding ways to be creative to get to Sean Jackson the ball. Just a simple, almost like an off-tackle play. Flip it back over to Deshaun Jackson around in for the touchdown. You know, he had a, a touchdown pass in the Army All-American Bowl when he was coming out of Long Beach Poly, and it almost looked, when he stopped to get the vision and look inside, it almost looked like he stopped and was going to put it in the air. Maybe that's a wrinkle Cal will have for later in the year. So number one gets Cal on the board. Well, obviously, Tom, there's a lot of things you can do off of that play. The next time he comes running around there, maybe it's November 10th against USC, but he comes around there, rise up and throw the ball as well. So uh, just a great individual effort that time in space by Deshaun Jackson. Steve Stanner talking with uh, his defense, and he told us, he said, you know, after that Colorado game, the defense was trying to hang its heads because of the special teams play. And I said, guys, you're on special teams. <laughs> it's your fault. You can't blame special teams. You have to make plays whenever you're on the field. Man, we talked, too, about trying to simulate Deshaun Jackson's speed. And he said all week they worked on angles. They worked on open field tackling. He said, matter of fact, we had Alex Square, our number 20. We used him trying to become Deshaun Jackson. But there's no way you can simulate the speed and explosiveness of Deshaun Jackson. That kick goes out of bounds. Colorado State will have it at the 35 yard line without Tom Schneider their place kicker who did not play last week against Tennessee so they're sharing the kicking duties are the Bears and that was Andrew Larson normally the punter so here's Caleb Haney ready to get back out get it on once again has a quick word with Dave Lay who spent five years golfing and away from collegiate coaching who was uh, spending time as a high school coach 60 percent completion rate for Caleb Haney. See why now they want those long, drawn out, time consuming drives, Tom? Try to keep that Cal offense on the field or on the sideline. There's Dave Lay. Said the handicap has suffered a little bit, but he said, you know, he can only play golf three times a week for so long, and it's time to go back and coach. And he returns to Sonny Lubick's staff, spent some time with him earlier, back when they were knocking off some big teams, including that win on the road in 94 against. A top 10 Arizona team. Here's an end around and a reverse for Colorado State trying to pull something out of the Cal playbook. And Damon Morton is off and racing. Here he goes to the sideline. Shakes a man still on his feet and he fights his way to the 21 yard line. Love the play call, Tom. Colorado State comes right back with a play of their own. Again, the fake give to Kyle, give to Kyle Bell. He turns around, hands it off. To Morton, who gets outside, gets behind Big Nick a lot, and says, "Get going, Big Nick." Avoids him down the sideline, cuts back. Poor angles and poor tackling that time by Cal's defense, but just a well-designed play by Dan Hammersmith. 43-yard move by Damon Morton, and so first and ten for Colorado State. And here's Kyle Bell stretching it to the outside, submarined after a couple of yards. And there's that Cal defensive line. Trev, you mentioned it without Mika Kane, who did not even make the trip for Cal. And we should mention as well, Colorado State banged up a bit on their offensive line. Tim Walter not playing center, so Nicolata moves over from right guard. That moves up Scott Benedict. So a couple players on that Colorado State offensive line in unfamiliar positions as well. Yeah, Benedict takes over at right guard. They're trying to protect Haney here, has time, lets it go. And inside the five-yard line goes Luke Roberts. Coverage that time by Shaquan Thompson, a very talented cornerback. That was just an easy toss from Caleb Haney. 
looks left that time, looks off the defense a bit, then goes back to the right, has man-to-man -man coverage out there with Sidcon Thompson. And you know, Colorado State coaches really felt that, you know, we probably will get some opportunities. They really felt that Cal would feel that they could line up in man-to-man, worried about the run, so they felt like they had to take some chances and a nice throw to Luke Roberts that time. They love to go to Corey Sperry here. He's at the line at the bottom of your screen, Bell. Fights his way forward, gets a few, takes a shot from Thomas Deku at the end of that play. And Kyle Bell is, knows how to take shots. He's just happy to be on the field, and the feeling around this Colorado State program coming out of Fort Collins before the season opener last year when he went down midweek with a torn ACL. And, you know, their struggles were late in the year. But when that happened, you just kind of felt all of the air go out of the Colorado State balloon. Well, they really changed who they are, their whole personality offensively. Caleb Haney is not a shotgun throw at 40 times quarterback. He simply isn't that type of player. Another touch for Bell. He's got to be towards the goal line and fought out of bounds at the two. That time by Marcus Ezef. He gets a start for Bernard Hicks at strong safety. Good tackle by Marcus Ezef that time. It's just a little off tackle give to Kyle Bell as he tries to stretch it to the outside, but that good speed. It's one thing Coach Tedford said. He said, I think what separates us from maybe a few years ago is we got really, really good speed, not just on offense now, but also on defense. 11 carries for Kyle Bell. And we're still in the first quarter as the Rams try to answer that Colorado State touchdown. Haney on the rollout. Pressure on. Chucks it towards the end zone. Picked off. Cal gets the pick at the goal line as Hill, Derek Hill comes in with it. Hill getting playing time today because Kane is out of the game. Good hands for the big fella, but again, there's 56, Zach Follett, as we talked about off the top. Colorado State coach is worried about him. He comes becomes the fifth uh, blitzer. Here he comes off the corner, lined up out on the slot. He comes up, gets pressure on Caleb Haney, an ill-advised throw, just tries to get rid of it, throws it back across his body, and the big fella goes up and gets it and comes down, and Cal is in position again inside the five. Trev, if you're Colorado State and the coaches, what's most disappointing about that is that's the same mistake Caleb Haney made against Colorado in overtime. That's exactly what they said. He played a marvelous game at three touchdowns, but at a crucial time, trying to make a play, tried to do too much. So trying to get him to play Full within start, his own number abilities. Number 63 of the offense, half the distance of the goal, first down. Terry Layden, the white hat today. That uh, false start will back Cal up. Now just outside the one yard line, Brian De La Puente, the senior from San Clemente, jumped. That offensive line looked impressive last week against Tennessee. And Cal defense comes up with a big play. Now looking for their offense to do it again. It was a 73 yard catch and run from Deshaun Jackson for their lone score. Trouble in the end zone. Somehow, Forsett gets out of it. And he takes it out to the three yard line. Yeah, that's just good toughness and running and balance by Justin Forsett because Blake Smith, big number 97, beat his block, was in the backfield, had a hold of Forsett in the end zone right there. Kind of got knocked off by his own teammate that time. And Bob Vomoff coming on the other side sort of knocked him off. How fortunate it wasn't a safety. A couple of times they've leaned on Forsett to get him out of the shadow of that goal post. Second and ten now. Here's Forsett again. Straight up the hash mark, straight up the gut. And he takes it past the ten before Curtis Cornelson comes up with his second straight stop of Forsett. And this Cal offensive line, Tom, trying to sort of assert itself here. And talking to some of the Colorado State coaches, you know, they really felt that this was just one big, nasty, physical group. And, uh, you know, they weren't complaining, but they said they do a nice job of holding, as all good offensive lines do. Uh, but this group really gets after you, and a nice job that time by the right side of that offensive line and open up a nice hole for Justin Forsett. So third and two now for Cal. Deshaun Jackson at the very top of the screen. Matched up with Joey Rux. They drop in the zone. Longshore goes to him. Quick out, first down as he steps out of bounds at the 15 yard line. Well, Deshaun Jackson has gotten his hands on the ball a few times, and it's, you know, they're not all spectacular, but it only takes one. We to get the juices going. Yeah, I talked about trying to get him involved early. I mean, that's just a one yard pass, get him involved. Again, a little end around that time. 
It was a nice run, but also pretty nice pursuit by Colorado State. But this is the killer right here. Again, just a little flip around to the outside and open field tackling and angles simply not there. The speed of Colorado State's defense just not enough to handle the great run by Deshaun Jackson. The fullback Hawley moves into position in front of Forsett. Longshore looking for Deshaun. No one moving, so he goes deep over the middle, and that is just past the hands of Lavelle Hawkins. Looked like he was waiting for Deshaun Jackson to go out and up. Deshaun just kind of stood on the route. Unfortunate that time the offensive line gave Nate just enough time. Really didn't have anywhere to go. Waited for the route to develop a Lavelle Hawkins. He was open for a step. Was simply overthrown that time by Nate Longshore. But now here's second and long. Again, we talked about Cal's offense taking their shots, especially if they're backed up. That last play, I guess you consider taking a shot. But once again, it's Colorado State defense trying to handle all of this speed out in space by Cal's offense. Longshore, five for eight in the air. Trying to set up the screen. It worked mar marvelously against Tennessee. Nothing doing here this time as it's filled up by Bob Vamoff. Tommy, you're not going to see a better play from a defensive end than Bob Amoff did that time. He's off the tackle there, breaks out of that tackle, and gets up and makes a terrific open field tackle by Larell Cunningham. Vamoff playing with a knee that was just scoped last week. He had knee surgery in the offseason. He's been banged up a little bit, but Trevor, you get the feeling you got a game like this, you kind of forget about all that. Number 10 comes to town. You got a chance, you got a. Some might say the front runner for the Heisman Trophy in your home field. Are you kidding me? Third and nine. Long short. Finds Hawkins. Hawkins stops short of the first down from here. Let's see the spot. Pagnata in on the tackle with Daryl Williams. The home crowd doesn't like the spot. It is on the 25, and that will move the chains. Good job that time by Nate Longshore of not panicking, surveying the field. Initially wanted to go the other way, comes back, just simple cover two. Safeties in the middle of the field get a little too wide, and right there, Lavelle Hawkins with a nice catch, and we'll see if it's a first down. Well, they will bring out the chains, not sure why. They just needed to get the nose of the football to the 25, and you can see a good third of that football rest on the stripe. And they get the chain set. And by the strap on the football. Cal picks up a first down. What a first quarter we've seen here today. Tied at seven. And they're going to take a look at this uh, spot. They're going to take a look at it in review and uh, see this play again on the completion to Lavelle Hawkins. It seems, Trav, that Colorado State has really answered the call against this Jeff Tedford offense, but specifically the secondary has answered the challenge early here in the first quarter. Yeah, with the exception of, of course, that one big play. They've played awfully well. A little pressure on Longshore there gets rid of it. And as Darrell Williams comes up, the question is, where was the forward progress of Lavelle Hawkins? Well, it's, it's tough to say that it wasn't at the 25-yard line when he started going backwards where the ball was. But if it would have been spotted at the 29, I don't know if Cal would have had an argument the other way. We go back to it each and every week. You have to have conclusive video evidence to overturn the call. And the call right now is the 25-yard line and a first down. The foot went over, but it matters only where the ball is. I don't think I see anything that is conclusively showing that he did not get a first down. And so your point is this, that unless it's obvious that he did not get over the mark, it's going to stand as a first down for Cal. Well, that is 0 for 2 for us, Trev. In <laughs> two weeks, we saw the same thing at TCU last week. We said, oh, it's not very conclusive. But now this uh, wide angle, give us a look. You see Hawkins in the hash mark. After review, the ruling on the field is reversed. The runner was down the far short, fourth down at the 24 and a half yard line. So Sonny Lubick's team forces a fourth and short for Cal with 17 seconds remaining in the first quarter. 
Now they obviously are having angles and seeing pictures that we're not seeing, Tom, because conclusive video evidence was not shown uh, that it was a first down or not a first down by anything that we saw. So they'll let the clock tick down, and that will bring it in to the first quarter. Cal walked the field after their walkthrough yesterday, and they chanted that this is our house. Well, it certainly looks like Sonny Lubick's house in his field early on as Colorado State has dominated time of possession. They've eaten up the clock with Kyle Bell, and outside of a Deshaun Jackson quick strike, they'd be up. Instead, we're tied at 7, one quarter into this one from Fort Collins, Colorado. Now well, they went and painted the big A on the hill that stands for Aggies and back in 1957 they changed the name of this institution to Colorado State from Colorado A&M and then the name changed the Rams followed shortly thereafter the Rams here headstrong tied at seven and uh, could be a Rams lead were it not for the Caleb Haney interception at the goal line. So fourth and short Cal lines up to punt it away. Andrew Larson, the senior from Mission Viejo, will handle the punting duties. And he gets rid of a boomer. This one, fair catch called for by Johnny Walker at the 28. We talked about that confidence for Caleb Haney. And the biggest confidence booster is having a guy like Kyle Bell next to you. Well, it certainly is. And that offensive line's been challenged. They've responded as well. But Kyle Bell, again, just hitting the hole, cuts back. Good aggressive powerful running and again good blocking up front good vision gets to the outside stays on his feet and here's the touchdown Kyle Bell gets in and long sustained drives if they can just avoid mistakes by Caleb Haney turning the ball over they certainly done very well on defense except for giving up that one big play this offense needs to get back to pounding the ball with Kyle Bell flag on the play jumps at the line Bell had 135 yards on 40 carries Ball last week. Number 80 of the offense, five yard penalty, first down. Corey Sperry jumps that time. We were talking with the coordinators, Dan Hammerschmidt and Dave Lay. And Dave Lay, you know, I'm still, I got here in the summer, I'm still getting to know some of these guys. The rest of the staff has been here forever. And they tell me that Kyle Bell gets stronger as the game progresses and he gets to 30 carries plus. And he kind of had a wink. He said, I didn't really see, I didn't really see that last week. So I'm hoping that'll come along. Well, I, I think that he has such high expectations yeah. of Kyle Bell. I mean, he has these, he said, the quote was, I have visions of him getting better, you know? I mean, he sees the talent, he sees the strength, his vision and cutback ability. I think the point is he wants him to hit the hole harder. Those holes just aren't open very long when you get to this level, especially a team like Cal with that speed they have in their front seven. You hit the hole quickly and then use your bruising style when you get to that second level. And so a bell comes off for a moment. And it was Derek Hill on the tackle again. He's back in game shape after working hard for Cal and back in playing time. And John Bozier enters the game at the tailback spot. Freshman from Miami. Haney wants to throw. He is bounced from the pocket, now trying to tuck it. Can't lose all the white shirts, and he fights his way. Out, uh, not necessarily out of trouble, but back to the 25-yard line before Anthony Felder finally dropped him, the junior from Seattle. See Haney this time as he goes back looking left all the way, feels that initial pressure that time and tries to escape to the outside. Doesn't go right down. The guy's 6'2", almost 240 pounds, but here they are now in third and nearly 15, so this is a difficult down for Colorado State. This offense simply isn't built for third and 15. CSU one for three on third down attempts so far this afternoon. Haney, pressure on and down goes Haney at the 22 yard line. Cameron Jordan, the freshman from Chandler, Arizona, making an impact. So some youngsters up front, Derek Hill and Cameron Jordan stepping up with this opportunity today in Fort Collins. Again, you know, the offensive line, they'd love to get down in a three-point, maybe four-point, and just run block, get after it, hand the ball off. And again, when you're third and long, that time Cameron Jordan knows what's going to happen, a good pass rush, and gets all over quarterback Caleb Haney. He drives Steve Judes, a walk-on who is just a head buster on the punt coverage team. Jackson standing at his 31. This is a low kick, and that time Jimmy Kaler you assume trying to keep it away from Deshaun Jackson. 
shanks it and it goes out of bounds at the 47. See the impact of Deshaun Jackson right there Tom you don't even have to touch the ball and have a huge impact in the game again. Jimmy Kaler trying to not give him a returnable kick kicks it out of bounds suddenly Cal finds themselves at the 47 yard line 24 yard kick. Well you can get one on one access to the best football in the West with CSTV.com's going West presented by Conoco Phillips. Follow our two intrepid road trippers as they roam the Wild West, talking game plan with the coaches, training with the players, eating team dinners, tailgating with the fans, and of course, taking in the games, including USC Cal on November 10th, BYU Utah, and much more. They were down in Colorado Springs this week, and now New Mexico State and New Mexico this weekend. Longshore has the ball in his hands, lets it go over the middle. Hawkins has it for a first down, and he's to the 26 yard line. For the Golden Bears of Cal, Clint Kubiak with his first tackle today. Difficult play to defend. You do the little inside handoff fake that freezes the linebackers. Can't get back into the middle of the field. And there's Lavelle Hawkins again. Colorado State coaches told me they feel he's the most complete and best wide receiver of all of them. Of course, Deshaun Jackson has special speed and special abilities, but in terms of the completeness, route running, hands, all those sorts of things, they really felt like Hawkins was the best player. Three of his five touchdowns last year came in the final three games. He's scored in four straight now. As Longshore looks to get into a rhythm. This time he finds him again. It will only be a gain of a couple. Good coverage by Colorado State. Once again, Mike Pagnata in at the bottom of that one. Pagnata was a guy who was uh, came in out of Illinois Va Valley High School in Cave Junction, Oregon, was convinced to walk onto the program. They really didn't know anything about him. And now he and Kubiak have combined to form a nice tandem at their safety spots. Great chemistry between the two. We've been playing together for a while now. And this defense is so important. If you're going to play a lot of cover two, the old Monty Kiffin cover two, you must have Good safety. Safeties were willing to come up and support the run, but also good enough in pass coverage. Safeties were the leading tacklers last year. Over the middle. What a grab by the tight end, Cameron Mora. And he's down just short of the goal line, but he might be hurt. I'm sorry, pass complete to Cameron Mora. Great grab by Mora at 6'5, 243. You see Longshore there, knew where he wanted to go all the way. See, there's Clint Kubiak at safety. Single safety set that time difficult right that seam right in the middle of the field not enough time for Clint Kubiak to get over and get in on the play. I think Nate Longshore is saying I let that one sail on me a little bit left my guy up. But they'll have first and goal as Mora is still tended to by the Cal athletic training staff. And you can sort of see the adjustment that coach Tedford has made now in this series they've sort of abandoned the run altogether, although they're doing a little play action inside fake handoff. They've es essentially said, OK, you've loaded up to not allow us to run the ball. We're going to call on Nate Longshore and our wide receivers, and we're just going to throw it down the field on you. Mora had three catches for 27 yards against Tennessee. Looks to be OK as he goes to the sideline. And Longshore getting into a rhythm with his head coach, Jeff Tedford, calling the plays. 10 for 13 now. For 86 yards as he looks at the uh, wristband and last week in the red zone against Tennessee four touchdowns of their six possessions in a field goal. Really stack it up. Smith meets him just shy of the line. Second and goal now. You got to like the play of this front four of Colorado State's defense. I think Eric Sandy and Bob Vomhoff, we've mentioned him, Blake Smith again that time, just getting in the gap, staying low, getting off of blocks, and making nice plays at the line of scrimmage. Not a big guy, Blake Smith, 6'2, about 255 pounds, but good interior quickness. Tough to block for that Cal offensive line. Well, to follow the fullback in there for Cal, we're set another chance, leaps in across the line. No signal yet. There it is. Cal touchdown. Pretty simple play that time, Tommy. You bring in your third tight end, three tight end set in the I formation behind that physical offensive line. Just the lead block that time. The line gets up on the linebackers, and Jake Potoff doesn't get the clean hit. It's a nice touchdown for Justin Forsett. Four touchdowns last year for Forsett. Running behind Marshawn Lynch of the Bills. 
Well, Sean was texting his former teammates nonstop last week in a big win against Tennessee. That was a statement game for the Golden Bears of Cal, and they're trying to keep that statement going strong here today against Colorado State. Fourteen seven California on top of Colorado State the 10th ranked Golden Bears with back to back scores with 10 24 to go in the second quarter and last one punched in by Justin Forsett. Travis is this is this typical you think of a letdown type atmosphere you come off against a big game against Tennessee you come on the road to an opponent you've only met one other time in your brief history. Well, it's the perfect letdown game. Obviously, they spent all summer and all of last year being reminded about the blowout in Knoxville. So, to get that huge win last week, but as Coach Tepper told us, he told his team, he said it was one game. I mean, they really haven't accomplished anything in terms of their goals. Here's Deion Morton bringing it out a yard deep, and Morton still on his feet past the 20, trying to take it outside, and he gets to the 28 yard line. A solid return from Deion Morton. Well, more big time football coming your way later today, right here on CSTV. Don't miss a second of the action at 6 Eastern when the Butch Davis era kicks into high gear as he leads the Tar Heels into battle against East Carolina. It's all part of a full day in Football Nation on CSTV. Tom, Colorado State needs to get back to getting that three and four yards on first down, get into that second and five, second and six, allow them to play action, some bootlegs, reassert themselves in that offensive line. First down, so important for this offense. Gartrell Johnson in at tailback. He was their starting tailback most of last year and has pulled double duty at fullback and tailback, getting plenty of reps both sides early in the season. So Bell starts this possession on the bench for Colorado State. See, there's that offensive line there. Just going to go to the left, little zone blocking up front, and Cal just does a nice job of getting off the blocks. There's Warrell Williams, number one. Nine tackles last week. Just a good job of reading the play and meeting Gartrell Johnson. Haney to the air this time. Finds Sperry, the tight end, short of the first down. And Sperry's holding his knee. The ball is loose. The play was whistled dead. And Sperry limps off the field into the Colorado State sideline. And that's the last thing the Rams want to see, as at least for one play, if not more, they lose one of their big weapons. And that's exactly what we talked about, Tom. And now you get him in a situation where the whole offense could either run or throw, just a nice throw. And Defender goes low and Corey Sperry just comes down on that knee. Not a pretty replay for the former basketball standout of Pueblo County High School. Poured in 23 points a game and the basketball program here at Colorado State even tried to send an invite out to him to get him on the court and now he's getting plenty of attention from the trainers. See Marcus Esep just comes up goes low on the tackle and hits him down there in the lower leg. Corey's been battling injuries really the last couple of years. I mean, he's been nicked up on and off. He hasn't been 100% healthy. Perry had such a huge game last week against Colorado with eight grabs for 103 yards, three touchdowns, and it looks like his left knee as Ezep has moved into the starting spot in front of Bernard Hicks, who's a little banged up for Cal. Looks like that left leg just kind of comes down into the turf, and then Ezep hits it while that foot is sort of planted in this field turf. Second catch for Sperry for 16 yards. And the official has taken another look at it. I'm not sure what they're looking at on the replay because he came, uh, I thought he came down with the ball and then it was whistled even though he lost it. I thought I heard a whistle and the play was whistled dead. Take another look. Might see if he actually had possession when he went down. So here he is, he's obviously got the ball, he's hit. Ground can't cause a fumble. Yeah, he kind of throws. It's almost as if he was in such pain that he got rid of the football and went to clutching that knee and getting off the field. 
if the play stands it'll be third and short for Colorado State which is giving Gartrell Johnson the junior from Miami a chance to run the ball here. Jeff Tedford looks over his chart he is reclaimed play calling duties for Cal. The time I was talking about when you get into that. Well third down. Regardless and uh, they'll keep the spot third and short. You know I was, I was talking about that second and five second and six it opens up your whole play. But what I mean by that is there's tendencies that teams have and if you get in that second and five second and six situation as Sperry walks off the field to get some treatment now all of a sudden as a defense you're not sure you can't come with your pressure could be a running down. And there's Haney on the sneak get a good spot to move the chains. And so that's exactly what they did. They got their four yards on first down, now second and six. The tendencies necessarily aren't there. They get the nice play action completion to the tight end, third and short. It's an easy first down. And at least the first half is done for Corey Sperry as he heads through the tunnel into the Colorado State locker room. And we'll wait and see if he's able to return for the second half. But they stick with Gartrell Johnson in the backfield here. Chris Kowalik in a tight end. And Haney on the little rollout finds a receiver. And that'll take it to midfield for Colorado State. So difficult as a defender, Tom. You're so geared up at first down. They're in that tight end formation, I formation. And you just do a little play action fake and then Haney rolls to the outside and just throws a nice pass that time to the outside and Marcus Isef has to come over from his safety position and a first down on a first down play. I don't think Kyle Bell is ready to get back in this game. Not only is the helmet strapped on, he's got the mouthpiece in standing on the sideline. Haney six for eight for 67 yards to get going for Colorado State but that one costly interception. Gartrell Johnson. With another carry at the teeth of that defense, Rulon Davis with the stop for Cal. They were talking to those offensive coordinators of Colorado State, and he said, you know, the one thing in watching Cal's defense, and obviously last week an emotional game playing against Tennessee, but he called it the jumping around factor. He said he seems to think that this defense just really, you know, a guy makes a big play in space, and they get the jumping around factor going. He thinks they play even at a higher level than maybe they would normally. So far in this game, really haven't been a whole lot of jumping around plays defensively for Cal. Part of that is you're playing an offense that really doesn't allow a whole lot of jumping around plays. Well, Rulon Davis had a jumping around play against Tennessee as they turned Tennessee away from the goal line and a zone blitz. He caught up with the running back and knocked away a pass. They said they're most impressed by him because he played smart against the balls. No microphone issues. Need a higher lip reader. Second and eight. Clock winding for Colorado State. And they're getting Gartrell Johnson some opportunities here. See if he gets a touch. And he does. Right up the middle. And uh, brought down by Warrell Williams, a junior from Sacramento. Williams' brother DJ, familiar to folks here in Colorado, linebacker for the Broncos. Morrell, a great athlete, was a quarterback in high school at Grant High School in Sacramento. He played seven different positions in his high school career and led his team to a state championship. We're calling it third and eight. Haney. Over the middle, catch made, first down, Colorado State still fighting for extra yards as Damon Morton, Sid Quan Thompson finally wrestles him to the turf. Well designed play that time, Tom, as you take your tight end, Chris Kowalczyk now on the right side, you vacate him, take him out to the flat and throw to your wide receiver, Damon Morton running away from the defender, attacking the middle of the field of that Cal defense. A very nice throw that time by Caleb Haney. Thompson, uh, another Grant High School product out of Sacramento on the tackle. Haney gets happy feet, fires it towards the sideline, and another nice gain for Colorado State. That time, 
Anthony Felder on the tackle. Zach Pauga, back out, second string fullback with the catch. He's out of Green Mountain High School in Lakewood. So mixing up the play calling now a little bit, Tom. As you see it here, again, play action. Cal worried about that running game. Haney feeling some pressure, but again, that's really not a difficult throw. It's a four and five yard throw. It's a simple throw out into the flats, essentially a running play. So a nice job of mixing it up, but yet not calling on Caleb Haney to do too much. Only one blemish on this strong start for, Sa for Caleb Haney. Guard trail. Johnson has a first down and tripped up at the 15 yard line. He had his eyes on the end zone. That's a good physical run by Cartrell that time. Coach has talked about in this offense, you must have a running back willing to hit the hole. That time, Gartell Johnson, look at him here, hits the hole, pads down, knees forward. He's tripped up as he got to that second level, but good blocking up front. And as this game wears on, Tom, it gets old as a defender when you have an offense that consistently smashes you and punches you in the mouth. You know, Thomas Deku just got him by a shoestring that time. Stay with a one pick in the goal line. Johnny Walker trying to cut it back in. Takes it to the seven. That'll bring up second and short. Johnny Walker, one of the senior leaders on his team. He's from Lancaster, California, out of Antelope Valley High School. Another, sorry, Tom, another first down uh, passing play call. And that time, again, a very simple. Simple throw for Caleb Haney as he just looks to his left and finds an easy opening for Johnny Walker, and it's a nice game. Now second and short again. Very difficult down and distance for this Cal defense. Throwback uniforms for the Rams. And a false start. Throwback uniforms for Colorado State. Brand new uniforms for the CSU band this year. Officials with their conference, Colorado State looking to tie it. 5-10 remaining in the first half from Hughes Stadium in Sunny Lubick Field. Their goal against Cal. He signaled second down, but they want to get that right. It was to be second in this uh, spot. Will likely move the chains, but well, you're going to get a substitution penalty that time on Cal's defense, Tom. Because running too many people in the huddle. Exactly what it was, but what an impressive drive again for Colorado State. All right, first and goal now for Caleb Haney and company. Made a mistake last time in the red zone. Made a mistake against Colorado with a pick in overtime. It cost the Rams a win in Denver. Gartrell Johnson is loaned back. Johnson gets the carry. Uh, behind a lot of in company and not a lot of room. Perhaps picks up a half a yard. Good job by Cal's defense that time of stretching it out is you get a lot of pulling out that time. And Difficult time to get down there in the goal line, see the offensive line. There he goes, big 64, Nicolata. Like to see him get up in there a little bit better, but quicker, I mean, but a good block on the outside that time as Robert Peel feels the block of Nicolata, and Gartrell Johnson simply follows the big offensive guard. Zach Pauga, the fullback in front of Gartrell. And here's Gartrell Johnson again. Nice cut back to the goal line, and he is down inside the one. And so Kyle Bell has been on the sideline for the length of this drive and Gartrell Johnson taking advantage of this opportunity to get some touches. And that's the play off of the previous play, Tom. They run the stretch to the outside. Now they show the same action and Gartrell simply cuts back against Colorado. Cal had done such a nice job the last play of getting out there. This time Gartrell cuts back against that over pursuit and almost gets into the end zone. Anthony Felder with the stop. They've got three great linebackers to the Bears. A scrum at the goal line. Where is the spot? Where is the signal? The line judge rushes in, and this one in. Touchdown, Colorado State. The Rams fire the cannon. 
as Caleb Haney eats up some clock with Gartrell Johnson. And they put it in the end zone, an extra point away from tying. Just a bit of a scrum here as Haney takes the ball and just gets behind that offensive line. Not a whole lot of movement. Second effort as they continue pushing. Well, the line judge just runs in. I don't think they saw much, Tom. No, I couldn't see anything. Jason Smith attempts the extra point, puts it through, and we're tied at 14. 3.29 to go in the second quarter. And Colorado State fights their way back in. The faithful ecstatic here at Fort Collins. And we're tied at 14, 3.29 to go before halftime. Tom Hart and Trev Alberts with you from Fort Collins, Colorado. A 13-play, 71-yard drive for Colorado State. And Caleb Haney apparently punched it in, although we'll give you another look. That instant replay opportunity wasn't uh, taken advantage of. The extra point was kicked, and so we move on. But we'll give you folks at home another look at that one. But Tom, I think the story of this game, though, is we talked about the importance of this offense having those long, sustained drives. And so far, the two scoring drives, one nine plays, 74 yards. And of course, you saw the 13 play drive. David Best, the freshman, trying to find this bouncer, picks it up at the eight, trying to get it outside. Here goes Best, spun around, and finally down at the 30 yard line. And take another look at this Caleb Haney sneak. You see Haney there. Really no movement at all. Cal's defensive line does a nice job of sort of stopping him there. Here's probably a better angle. You see, you'd hope that Gartrell, there he is, just kind of slid in off the side there. I think defender sort of lost him. Still not a great angle. I think what you're calling for, Tom, is a potential replay. Well, the replay has been an issue a time or two today, and that time, no opportunity to make it an issue. First down, Cal. Nate Longshore has a ton of time to let it go, and he finds Deshaun Jackson. And finally, Jackson shoved out by Mike Pagnotta. A lot of room to roam, but nothing doing after the catch for Deshaun that time. Just a great first down play call by Jeff Tedford. And, you know, we talk about the speed so much of Deshaun Jackson, but that play showed a terrific route. I mean, you can have all the speed in the world, but if you're rounding off your routes, it's pretty easy to read. That time did a great job going up the field, shows the inside cut, then back to the outside. Darrell Williams bites on the inside cut, and it's a nice throw by Nate Longshore. 25-yard strike from Longshore to Deshaun Jackson. Goes to the air again. This time finds his big tight end, Craig Stevens, who had a masterful game against Tennessee, even though he didn't catch a ball against the Vols. And as we talked about on the last series, Tom, Cal pretty much just going away exclusively from the run, saying, fine, we'll make the adjustment. We'll put our quarterback in the shotgun. We have enough talent and speed and skill on the outside. We'll get some of these guys out in space. And we've done that a couple of times already. Two plays and 30-some yards. Well, second and two. Longshore, over 100 yards now, 12 for 15, 109 yards passing. Hawkins at the bottom of the screen. This is Forsett. Great cutback for Forsett. Loses a man and takes it to the 25-yard line. Wade Landers saved a touchdown that time with just good effort from his right defensive uh, end position, but a good cutback that time. And so I guess you can do it any way you want. Just open up this defense by throwing the ball, get him in that position, and then run Justin Forsett. Our Aflac trivia question for the day. Who is the only Cal player to Go number one overall in the NFL draft. Think about that one as Longshore and company come to the line. They're tearing off chunks of yardage, play after play on this quick drive. Two, 13 and counting in the first half. Longshore again, going deep. Jackson has it tipped away. And that one right past Kubiak. Great coverage again by that Colorado State secondary and Joey Rux. Now that was a good read by Joey Rux that time. Stayed on the outside shoulder of Jackson when he read the pass from Longshore, cuts to the inside, and really should have had an interception. You see Longshore go, looks left first and goes back to the right, and Ruck cuts inside and breaks up the pass from Longshore. Rubiak coming in to knock Jackson's head off. Goes second and 10. Longshore again wants to throw. Pressure on, down he goes. 
Tommy Hill gets to the backfield in a hurry. Good pressure by Tommy Hill that time. Just beats the block, gets around the corner, and it happened fast enough. Nate Longshore simply didn't have enough time. Just fakes the inside handoff, comes right off the edge that time. Great job by Tommy Hill, and a huge play for this Colorado State defense. Hill three sacks last year for Colorado State. The sophomore from Arapahoe High School in Inglewood, Colorado, coming up with a big play for the Rams, and now a big third and 17 for the Golden Bears. Pressure again. They set up the screen. Nowhere to go. Rux takes down for set. Great pursuit that time, Tommy, by this Colorado State defense. It's a pretty good play call. Invite the rushers in, dump it off to Forsett. But once again, a great individual effort by Tommy Hill as he gets out, makes a cutback, and Joey Rux cleans up. You see it here, invite the rushers. Here comes Blake Smith, dump it off, break a couple tackles. Tommy Hill does a nice job of turning it back. And how about Joey Rux? Don't you feel good for him? After struggling last week against Colorado, he's played awfully well here so far in the first half. It is fourth and 14 for Cal. Well, let's go back to our trivia question, our Affleck trivia question today. The only Cal player ever to go number one overall in the NFL draft. Trev, you got it? I'll wait till we show the answer and then I'll hey, once your hometown Cassie. Atlanta Falcons. First overall pick in the 75 draft and the NFL Rookie of the Year in 1975 with the Falcons. Atlanta might want to have Barkowski back. I mean, some you quarterback know, questions of their own. Well, Joey Harrington is, uh, some of the locals are pretty happy in, with Joey at this point. And Bobby Petrino has done an awful lot with a lot of quarterbacks, obviously, when he was in the NFL. And, in college, so people are excited to see what he can do with Joey. Here is Jordan Kay on to attempt this field goal. Tom Schneider, remember, out. This is a 37-yard attempt. Travis watching him during pregame. He was booming him from 50-plus. Jordan Kay, the junior from Rolling Hills, and this one has the distance, and it is good. Cal pushes in front. Less than a minute to go before half. Can Colorado State get off a quick strike? Cal back out in front, 17 to 14 over Colorado State. 51 seconds to go in the half, seven plays, 41 yards, a quick two and a half minute drive. And Jordan Kay with his first field goal. Subbing for the injured Tom Schneider. Caleb Haney on the sideline, ready to get back out in the field. One more chance for Colorado State in his first half. Deion Morton set to receive for Colorado State. Back there with George Hill. Angled kickoff. Morton takes it at the two. And here he goes up the sideline. No blockers in front of him, and he fights his way to the 20-yard line. Well, be the head of programming for your own college sports network. That's right. CSTV gives you the power to get live games, the latest news, up-to-the-minute scores, and more on your TV, your computer, and your mobile phone. Now you can catch any team you want whenever you want. Go to CSTV.com slash my channel to find out how you can put all your teams on all of your screens. 45 seconds left for Caleb Haney and company here in the first half. And Kyle Bell back into the game for Colorado State. Rams have three timeouts remaining if they want to use them. Pressure on Haney will scramble, and he turns a loss into a gain of five and a half. Brandon Hampton, the senior from Westchester High School in Los Angeles, with the tackle. A little surprise, Tommy, there, as conservative as this offense has been. Getting here towards halftime. Got to be pleased. 17 to 14. So far, your offense has done well trying to throw there on first down. Got to be pleased. You've got to be ecstatic here in the first half. Well, I think this team came into the game expecting to win. I, I could tell talking to the coaches. They really felt like they had a great chance. Here's Bell. Has a first down. That will stop the clock with three ticks remaining. 
Colorado State. Showing that they can move the ball. Mike Muhammad, the freshman from Little Old Brawley, California, with the tackle. Redshirt freshman put on 20 pounds of muscle. Now 6'4", 220, coming out of Brawley High School. Well, the clock runs out here in the first half. But an exciting second half promised here from Fort Collins. A 17-14 lead for the 10th-ranked Bears of Cal. Now let's go to Zucker and Zolak. Chilling at the field house in New York for CSTV Game Room. CSTV Football Nation is being brought to you by Chick fil A. We didn't invent the chicken, just the chicken sandwich. And brought to you by Aflac. Ask about it at work. Folks, back in Fort Collins, we've got a game. The Colorado State Rams have come to play. They trail by three, and now we're joined by Coach Jeff Tedford. Coach, tough test to try to bounce back after the big game against Tennessee, and Colorado State really came out firing today. Yeah, they're playing really well. We've got to get off the field on defense. We're not playing well right now. We've got to tackle better, and, and uh, on offense, keep them off the quarterback a little bit, but we just got to tackle better and stop their offense. Right now, they're controlling the line of scrimmage. Coach, what are they doing defensively? It seems like they're having a pretty good success slowing down Justin in that running game. Well, they're, they're hustling real well. I mean, you know, they're all up in there. They're playing a lot of zone. They're stacking the box in there, and and uh, we got to go uh, to the drawing board at halftime and find that they're playing a little different than they than they came in here showing. So we got to make some adjustments. All right, Coach, thanks for your time. Thanks. All right, Trev, uh, Sonny Lubick joins us now, and we talked to Jeff Tedford. He said they're doing some different things. Sonny, thanks for being with us. What are you guys doing differently that they weren't expecting today? Well, not a heck of a lot. We're playing a little, a little bit of man, but maybe more of our two, two coverage. We haven't, we haven't blitzed him. Maybe that might be one thing. We haven't blitzed. We just played our four-man rush. He does have some time to throw the ball, and that's kind of frightening a little bit. But uh, we just got to keep playing great coverage and just keep playing as hard as we played the first half. Coach, you must feel really good about your offense. Two long, sustained drives, controlling the ball, controlling time of possession. That's our, that's our chance to win the game. If they, if they're on the field a whole bunch of times, they're off, they're, they're, they're good enough. They're going to put some points on the board. All right, Coach, thanks for your time. Best of luck in the second half. So, thanks, Trev, man. this is what we're seeing so yeah. far today. Colorado State eating up the clock. You know, a lot of coaches would tell you that that's the most overrated stat in college football. But when you're playing a team like Cal, all that goes out the window. you got to keep them off the field. Yeah, it's not overrated in this game yeah. because that's the way Colorado State's offense is built. They have to win first down. They have to get the running game going. They've gotten Kyle Bell going in this game. But that's that long, sustained drives where you put pressure on that Cal defense. And the impressive thing is 17 10 and a half, 14 at halftime. Wait till the fourth quarter when that front seven has to continue to deal with that offensive line of Colorado State. Deshaun Jackson has over 100 yards of offense. He's the leading rusher and receiver. More to come after this. Well, it's more than just a scare for 10th ranked Cal, a three point lead at halftime over. Colorado State 17 to 14 and we're ready to get this second half underway. Colorado State will receive this Rams offense by the way will be without the services of Corey Sperry. He went down midway through the second quarter with a knee injury. He will not return. Good news is they got some rest for Kyle Bell on that last scoring drive. He spent the whole drive on the bench. Cannon fires and it's hauled in by Deion Morton a couple of yards in the wall set up. Here goes Morton right up the gut and he's out to the 27 yard line. Take a look at the first half highlights now that all starts with number one Deshaun Jackson. A little reverse here Tommy just gets to the outside and once hold number one gets in space look out all the way to the end zone 73 yards for a touchdown. Nathan Longshore was efficient in the first half 112 yards passing. Getting the ball to Deshaun Jackson. Then Kyle Bell, as we expected, carrying the load for Colorado State. 13 carries. Yeah, really good job by the offensive line. And again, we talked about winning first downs, averaging just under five yards a carry is Kyle Bell. A very good showing in that first half by this Colorado State offense. And Bell back on the field to start the second half. Haney will be dropped inside the 15. Tyson Alu Alu with the drop. So defensively getting the job done and compliments to Deshaun Jackson five touches 109 yards and Bell again the workhorse. That's what we talked about a little surprising there that first play call again trying to mix it up a little bit on first down getting in second and manageable now you find yourself in second and forever 
because the offensive line doesn't do a great job of block blocking, and Caleb Haney goes down. Alu Alu with the drop. Here's Bell, and he is met head on by Warrell Williams. And his defense acting like he got a talking to in the locker room at half from Bob Gregory. Rightfully so. This Colorado State offense controlled the clock, had more plays. And did Cal's offense control the clock nearly 17 minutes there in the first half, 36 offensive plays, but now they find themselves in third and forever. And this is where look out for this defense. 56 Jack Zach Follett coming off the edge. They rush for Haney goes with an underneath route, and that'll take it to the 25. Needed to get to the 37. Sidquan Thompson with the stop, bringing down George Hill, who's a California native. He's out of Corona. So Thompson exits the field, and we get a chance to see Deshaun Jackson at work again. Jimmy Kaler on the punt mentioned early his first punt of his college career was to Reggie Bush of USC. I don't know who you'd rather punt to, Reggie Bush or Kaler. Watch film. He said Deshaun Jackson is a better returner than Reggie Bush. Spent time working one-on-one -on -one with the only Hall of Fame punter Ray Guy in the offseason. Sean Jackson catches it on the run, a low line drive. A great opportunity for number one, and he is upended at the 47-yard line. A 13-yard return for Deshaun Jackson. Nate Longshore calls the signals for Cal. Did a nice job, Tom, just early on trying to get everybody involved. Job at best early on. Then again, Lavelle Hawkins to the outside. Very poised quarterback. The running game wasn't getting going. Took it upon himself there in the first half. Was in the shotgun. Very accurate there in the first half was Nate Longshore. 112 yards passing for Longshore. Threw for 241 and a couple of scores against Tennessee. And you're right, sharing the ball. A lot of different guys have gotten touches. And now they swing it out for a couple of yards that time. Curtis Cornelson with the tackle for Colorado State. And Tommy Hill in there on that play. And that time, uh, I believe that's job at best. We're in number 14. He needs to pull on a different jersey on special teams plays. And so best typically wears number four. Remember last week against Cal, they had two guys with the same number in on a kick return and were flagged for a penalty. So he's wearing number 14 for the moment. They peel that off. He's back to number four on the sideline. For set in the backfield. Gets the ball in his hand, takes it past the 40, will be a yard short of the first down. But here's Javid Best with a quick change on that Cal sideline. Hit number 14 over the top. You pull him out. Guys, get this off. That's not easy, Trev. <laughs> not easy on the announcer trying to do the play-by-play -play call either. Yeah, Superman needed the booth. Best just needs a sideline. So now Jabba Bass, a freshman out of Richmond, California, back in the game. They like to put him in situations to succeed, and right now that means getting him in space. Fullback Will Tafoe is in front of him. Longshore to throw on third and short. Here is Bass, and a Cal first down, and he continues running all the way nearly to the 30. Horenic with the stop for Colorado State alongside Jake Pottower. Coach Tedford talked to us at halftime, Tom, about some of the different things that Colorado State's doing defensively. And I think you just go back and say, look, forget about all that nonsense. Let me get the ball in the hands of my playmakers in space. And a good job that time. Just a simple pass out to Best. But you get him out in space. It's a nice tackle by Podorf. But any time you get Best and Podorf for these linebackers of Colorado State in space, Best or Forsett or Deshaun Jackson will win that battle every time. Again, looking to throw. Jackson had to go right through his hands. On a first down play, he was open, settling into the heart of that zone. See Deshaun Jackson here lined up. Looks like he got man coverage on the outside. Had plenty of room to roam there as Darrell Williams, but throw just a little bit high. Is he hey. given too much a cushion in man coverage? Or is that what you have to do against Deshaun Jackson? Well, I mean. Yeah, typically you would say, listen, young man, you can't give him that much cushion. You just do a little hook, and you'll have a 10-yard gain every time. But it's Deshaun Jackson. <laughs> He'll run past you if you don't. So second and 10. Hawkins in motion. Goes back to the top of the screen. 
Longshore goes to Hawkins, setting up the screen. Gets a nice block from the tight end, Stevens. Here goes LaBelle Hawkins, brought down from behind by Tommy Hill. And Clint Kubiak had him on the front side. Good tackle, too, or good block that time by Cameron Mora at tight end. Gets to the outside, a little pressure, gets rid of it. Just enough out there. A nice little throw, gets back into the inside middle of the field, Lavelle Hawkins. Well, they thought the screens worked awfully well against Tennessee. Third and two for the Golden Bears. There's Craig Stevens, 6'5", 258. Jim Mahalik loves this guy. He's a throwback. He's a tough guy. He's a Mike Ditka type end. They fake to Hawkins, trying to set up the screen. Pressure was there, and they get another knockdown on Nate Longshore. That time, Jesse Nading got in his face quicker. Jesse Nading just is going to come off the corner that time. And initial pressure unblocked, just right in the face of Nate Longshore. Nowhere had to get rid of the ball. Four hurries, three knockdowns, a sack of Nate Longshore today for Colorado State. Tom, you have to be impressed with this Colorado State defense. They have given up some big plays in this game, but by and large, they've hunkered down and done a pretty nice job against this, deep, this offense. 41-yard attempt for Jordan Kay has already hit one today. Not bad for a walk-on kicker. He nails another one and puts it all the way back into the tunnel. Cal extends its lead up 20 to 14. 10 minutes left in the third quarter from Fort Collins. Cal leading Colorado State 20 to 14. Another field goal for the junior Jordan K. And Andrew Larson handles the kickoff duties for Cal with Tom Schneider out. He pulled his quad in pre pregame warmups against Tennessee. Never a good sign when your kicker goes down when he's out there in shorts. Let's think about the second half here so far. Colorado State comes out, throws on first down, gets in an unmanageable situation, then have to punt. It's a low line drive. Cal finds itself with great field position and come away with three points. Colorado State must do what they do on offense, run the football on first down. Morton with his front foot on the line, takes it out to the 23 and a flag in at the end of that return from Deion Morton, the sophomore from Riverside, California. 23-yard return, flag pending. So the question is, we get this uh, this penalty called out, Trav, is what does Cal do differently defensively? Holding number five, ten-yard penalty, first down. That'll back up Colorado State again. But what do they do differently to try and get this Colorado State team off the field, get their offense back out there? Well, I think you have to do something to energize your defense. And as we've seen in college football, uh, even with Louisville the other day, I mean, you just can't turn it on defensively. You, you know, defense is, is about emotion. It's about playing. Obviously, Corey Sperry won't be playing here in the second half. Had a little bit of a knee injury there in the first half, an integral part of their offense. But maybe it's some run blitzes, try to get some penetration. Uh, but again, this, this is not what Colorado State is about. This is a crucial penalty. Now find themselves inside their own 10-yard line. Oh, what a hit right at the line of scrimmage by that Cal front line. Part of the, yeah, Tyson Alu Alu, the sophomore from Honolulu. Well, and that's what you can do, too. Just have the defensive coaches get in the face of uh, your defensive players. Nice spin move back to the inside, engaged on the block, and Tyson just spins back into the running back. There's close lines in there. Nice hit by Tyson Alu Alu. Sophomore out of St. Louis High School from the Islands. Played in all 13 games as a freshman last year for Cal. Bell with another chance. He's a physical running back, running into some physical linebackers. That time, Zach Follett, the junior from Clovis, California, with the stop. Follett, has, uh, you know, he's got a new hairstyle. He's got tiger stripes in his head. And at the walkthrough yesterday, he was showing that look off. It kind of, kind of looks like a Cincinnati Bengals helmet a little bit. Greg Van Hosen, a middle linebacker who's an artist, for the first time worked with the hair medium and painted Follett's head. Linebackers are a bit different. Tom. Bell picks up the block, but Haney will still go down. Alu, Alu gets him again. We talked about getting some pressure that time. Warrell Williams comes right up the middle. And again, you get this offense in predictable situations. You can take some chances, place a man on the outside. Just too much pressure for Caleb Haney. 
And there it is, right in the middle of the field. They come with a blitz, and there comes Warrell Williams, comes late. Actually, Mike Muhammad actually was the initial pressure from the outside, bringing those linebackers, getting pressure on Caleb Haney. Number one to Sean Jackson, standing in midfield. Another fantastic opportunity for field position for Cal. Beautiful kick and hang time off the foot of Jimmy Kaler, and Jackson almost fumbled that one away. Would have been wise to let it go, but still they'll have it at the 44-yard line, and Cal is back on offense. Oh, great day to grab a tube, grab a wrap perhaps, and go floating down the Poudre River. And another sunshine-filled Saturday afternoon here in the Rockies in Fort Collins, Colorado. And the Golden Bears of Cal up 20 to 14. And Colorado State wearing those throwback uniforms, and then, now they need to try and throw back this Cal offense, which is firing on all cylinders now. Great field position again for the Golden Bears, and Forsett up the middle, dragged down by Mike Pagnotta. Good read that time, good play by Mike Pagnotta as he's lined out on the slot, just comes in. It's that inside read, handoff, reads it, gets down the line and makes the play. It's the inside handoff that time, and looks like big game cutting back for Forsett, but Pagnotta does a nice job of closing down and making the play. Running right behind Brian De La Puente, at left guard. Alex Mack is in the game at center for Cal. Questions. Whether or not he would go the whole game today, sprained his thumb against Tennessee. Forsett, nowhere to go as he bounces outside, but he fights through the first two and yards after contact. Turns that into a positive for Justin Forsett. Turns it into a positive, but good penetration, a good job by that Colorado State defense. Here they are right there. That's Bob Pardo from the end. And up, there he is again, your number 13, Mike Pagnotta. He comes up, and Jake Podorf ends up cleaning up. Good pursuit by this Colorado State defense. Third and three. Forsett had a big second half last week against Tennessee. Looking for Deshaun Jackson. Got him towards the sideline, but he can't get going, and he loses the football. Did he get it back? If he did, it'll be fourth and short. Darrell Williams was all over Deshaun Jackson. Been pretty impressed, Tom, with these corners of the Rams, both Darrell Williams and Joey Rux. Initially here, Nate Longshore looking left all the way, goes out to Deshaun, he's open, tries a spin move, and Darrell Williams does a nice job of knocking the ball away. Good open field tackling by these corners of Colorado State. They're going for it on fourth and two. They need to get to the 33. Fullback to Foa in the game. Hawkins in motion. They want to throw on fourth and short. Looking over the middle of first down. Hawkins flag on the play. Here goes Lavelle Hawkins. Touchdown. Cal, is it coming back? It's going to come back, Tom. You're going to get a hold. Jake Podorf at linebacker was coming on a blitz, and his whole jersey was almost pulled off. They bring it back, and it'll be fourth and seven. And that's Mike Tepper. Is, there he is, your right tackle, holding right up the middle. You get the pressure that time. Well, Tepper was a big-time soccer player in his youth. That would be the same as being offsides in a breakaway goal. Bring it back, take it off the board. Played 11 years of soccer to help, and that indeed helped improve his footwork. So, pardon me, it's fourth and 12 now for Cal, and they bring the punt team on. Walker, ready to get it away. Johnny Walker at the 10, five yard return, and he's brought down. Well, this isn't the only great game. It's some after the whistle activity on both sides, really. And I guess the question is, Morton didn't think his knee was down. So he tried to keep going, but it's a five-yard return. So this isn't the only great game we've got coming your way. T.J. Yates will quarterback North Carolina tonight. Last week against James Madison, threw for three touchdowns, and he deals with Quentin Cotton. And that linebacker spot for ECU had 14 tackles up in Blacksburg against the Hokies last week. 
Carter Blackburn and Brian Jones have the call tonight from Greenville, North Carolina, and ECU. One of two AC, one of three, pardon me, ACC games that ECU will play. Important series here for the Colorado State offense. This is the third series now here in the second half. They've been backed up, need to get back to field position. Their average start has been their own 17. Cal has started at Colorado State's 47 yard line. Their average start in the second half. Haney gives it off. Nowhere to go up the middle. Now that Cal defense starting to strengthen, thanks in large part to Tyson Alu Alu. Tyson's done a nice job up front just getting off of blocks and so many times there he is coming to the inside getting pressure in the sack on Caleb Haney the spin move back inside beats the block of Adrian Martinez this Cal defense trying to assert itself after a lackluster first half performance and Colorado State having to go with Eric Pates in their tight end after Corey Sperry is out he's just a freshman from Crofton Nebraska missed that block Haney flush, Alu Alu in his face, and he chucks it out of bounds. Third and ten, forthcoming for the Rams. Good coverage that time by the Cal secondary. Pretty good job by the offensive line as well of Colorado State. Plenty of time. There's Tyson Alu Alu again. He tries to come on his pass rush. Initially blocked well. That's long enough. No one to find for Caleb Haney and simply throws it away. The offensive line did its job that time. The wide receivers couldn't get open. This is a position that Colorado State was all too familiar with last year, facing third and ten. And here's where they miss Corey Sperry, the middle of the field threat that he provided from the tight end position. Chris Kowalik in there at tight end. Pates is in there, partly. Haney pressure gets it off underneath. Nowhere to go. And brought down to bring up fourth and three short of the first town. Damon Morton with the catch. So for Colorado State. Colorado State has chosen to do is since Corey Sperry is no longer in the game, as you see the pressure on Haney, taking the tight ends, vacating zones, trying to bring defenders with him, and then dragging Damon Morton across the middle. Just enough there, but a nice open field tackle that time. Initially, the good hit by Brian Hampton. And good pursuit by that defensive line of Cal. Field position has been key for Cal here in the second half. They've got a couple of field goals to show for it. And Jackson pushed back to his 35 to haul this one. Jackson all the way up to the 46 yard line, 11 yard return. 20 to 14. Cal out in front, 404 to go in the third. We have some uh, little names coming up with big plays for Colorado State. Some walk-ons in that punt coverage team and former walk-ons. That's Zach Bryson at Reno who had this stop. Watch number 10 as he rushes down, gets in on the play. And, you know, we talked to Coach Lubick about this uh, punt coverage team. And there's puts a lot of walk-ons on his punt coverage and, you know, shows a lot of faith and confidence in them. He said, we believe in them. We're going to punt to Deshaun. I think you send the message, the wrong message to your team. If you tell them, guys, you're not good enough. I know how electrifying, how dangerous he is. You at least have to give your guys a chance to cover the punt. Two returns. So, pardon me, Trap. 24 yards in returns for Deshaun Jackson. And Justin Forsett. Brought down by Joey Rux. And I got to tell you, probably the most impressive thing to me has been the play of this Colorado State defense against the run of Cal, especially considering what they did to Tennessee's defense last week, 230 yards rushing. He's doing a very nice job of going down the line of scrimmage, getting off blocks, and a good, solid open field tackle by Joey Rice. Phil Former said one of the things Tennessee did wrong last week, they missed too many tackles. Colorado State not missing many tackles at all this afternoon. Very, very good job. They worked on that all week, angles and open field tackling. Trying to get to Alex Square, who was the scout team, wearing the same number 20 of Forsett, and now it's Tommy Hill with the stop. Gain of a yard and a half that time for Forsett. Well, Trev, you can talk about stopping or slowing down Justin Forsett, but the most impressive numbers coming from that win against Tennessee for Forsett in the fourth quarter. He had 12 carries for 92 yards when they were trying to put the game away. Yeah, I think that's where we learned the most about Cal. Tennessee had closed it to 38 to 31, and Cal down the stretch. And there were questions about their toughness. There were questions about. You know, just how bad they wanted it. In that last 10 minutes, they dominated Tennessee physically. They empty the backfield. Five wide for Cal. 
Facing third down, bad snap, long, short, quick pickup. Goes to Deshaun, and it's off of his mitts. Fourth and seven, forthcoming for the Bears. They'll punt it away. And he had Deshaun Jackson open that time. It was a bad snap. See him in the shotgun and just hurries to throw a little bit. Feels like he's got to get rid of it. Just over the outstretched arms of Deshaun Jackson. And so Longshore talking with Alex Mack over on the sidelines. Come on, buddy, get that back to me. That was a big play. And Mack, remember, playing with a bruised thumb, sprained thumb in that Tennessee game, but still in action. Long snapper here, Nick Sunberg, puts his throw on the dot. And this is a great punt off the foot of Larson at the one, and it bounces into the end zone. So Nate Longshore on the sideline chatting with his center, Alex Mack. And Mack not happy. He knows there was a big mistake. and. Play where they emptied the backfield. I thought Longshore showed great composure to get his hands on that one, and get it up and out quickly. Yeah, it's difficult. Anytime you're a quarterback, the thing you're trying to do is survey the field. You want to see the defense and where they're dropping, what coverage are they in. So every time you have a bad snap and it takes your eyes off the ball and you look down, suddenly you have to look up. Very difficult. You feel like you have to hurry the throw. Kyle Bell with the carry, off tackle, and brought down by Anthony Felder. Trev, if I'm a Colorado State fan, I say, gosh, we keep giving it to Kyle Bell, and he's getting a couple, three yards here and there. How does that help the offense? Well, that's exactly how they're built, and that's why they're successful. I mean, you get your three yards on second down. Let's assume you've got three or four here on second on first down. Now you get three or four on second down. It's all about getting in a third and manageable for this offense. It's about the play action. It's about the boot game. It's about the short passing game, efficient passing game. That was unfamiliar territory for Colorado State last year. So Bell again, and this time he picks up the first down, takes some white shirts with him all the way to the 36-yard line. Thomas Deku finally brought him down. And, and that's just the point, Tom, because when you go through a game, and, and those runs that are two and three yards in the first quarter, maybe even in the second quarter, start turning in to eight and nine-yard runs. Just pretty good vision that time by cutting back. Kyle Bell feels the pressure, cuts back a little bit, finds that open hole, good blocking right there, and makes a couple guys miss. That's why you continue to stick with it. That's the personality of this team. 19 carries, 81 yards for Kyle Bell, the junior out of Weld Central High School. Haney hit as he was getting ready to throw after the pump fake. Loose ball picked up by Cal. Tad Smith. Picks it up, and the second turnover for Haney, it was Anthony Felder who pit, put the hit on the Colorado State quarterback. And Anthony Felder has had one of the best days a Cal linebacker's had in a long time. Had nine tackles in the first half. Just comes off the corner. Kyle Bell doesn't see him. Absolutely drills Caleb Haney and forces a turnover. Never sees him come. Felder puts his helmet right below the chin strap. Caleb Haney. Eric Gaines knows how that feels. Last time it was Warrell Williams returning a fumble recovery for a touchdown against Tennessee. Jeff Horenic on the stop for Colorado State. Six point Cal lead, a minute to go in the third quarter, and Haney catching his thoughts on the sideline. Chatting with uh, wide receivers coach Mark Lubick. On the Colorado State sidelines, that guy came right at me. Somebody's supposed to have him, aren't they, Coach? <laughs> well, you know, it's funny because they said we were not really concerned on the guy coming from Caleb's front side because we've got some hot reads over there, but that time nothing set up. Haney was looking over the middle, if not to the left. And teams adjust. Last week it was fall up. This week here comes Anthony Felder. There's another mistake by that Cal offensive line. It was Mike Tepper who jumped. Now you got. Tepper with a couple of false starts. You got Alex Mack with that poor snap on the shotgun. Tom, the reality is Cal is just not sharp. I mean, you can talk about, look, we're ready to play. We knew it was only one game, but the reality is this. You had a huge game at home against Tennessee. It was all about redemption. 
Now you have to get over that. Come on the road, go to Fort Collins. I'm not saying they didn't take Colorado State seriously, but it's been a lackluster, lackadaisical effort in large part for the Cal Golden Bears. Longshore sets up, curls one deep for Deshaun Jackson, and that one too strong. Good coverage again by Joey Rux. They've gotten to Longshore four times, four sacks for this Colorado State defense. Colorado State doing a good job. There was plenty of protection that time for Nate Longshore, but Colorado State trying to always have a second guy helping out in deep coverage that time. Clint Kubiak does a nice job of staying home, helping out Joey Rux. And I say it again, these young corners of Colorado State, actually Joey Rux is a senior, but these corners playing with so much confidence, especially considering what happened last week. Third and 13 as the third quarter comes near an end for set up the middle misses a man still going strong inside the 25 yard line a couple of guys from behind brought him down but we also see a flag on the field Jesse Nading chased him down three seconds on the clock good call that time by Jeff Tedford simply spread the whole field out assuming it's past trying to get some read that pressure from Colorado State on the draw play, but it all comes back again, making mistakes time and time again at crucial times as this Cal offense. Just a nice run, good read. Good cutting ability, but a block right there in the back by Craig Stevens. So another mistake by the Cal offensive line to let the clock wind here in the third quarter. And we go to the fourth. It's a six-point game. Colorado State playing better than advertised. They're looking to slay another giant as 10th ranked Cal comes bouncing into town. And Colorado State wants to bounce him out of the mountains with a loss. 20 to 14, the Golden Bears on top of the Rams. Colorado State sniffing an upset here as we start the fourth quarter. Deshaun Jackson had a big first half. He's been held silent so far in the second half. Family plays a big role. You see his mom, Gail, and his father in the sands, uh, Bill, and also a couple of his brothers, three of his brothers who are so important to what he does in his training, specifically his brother Byron, who was in camp with the Chiefs for a couple of years. And I, I want him to learn what it takes to work, to train, to be a better football player. He was just a youngster, offered him $5 every time he could catch the ball as he fired it to him as hard as he could. He might have to offer him again. He's had a couple of passes go off his hands in the third quarter. Third and 12. Longshore steps up, looking deep, and this one is overshot again, and Nate Longshore just isn't crisp here in the second half. Overshooting Lavelle Hawkins at time. You know, Tom, coach. Tedford talked to us at halftime about the confusion and that Colorado State was doing different things in their secondary. We talked about it. They call it that box out three deep, showing a lot of man coverage, then dropping off into zone, still getting a little bit of pressure. So far, Cal's offense, especially in the second half, not a lot to go on. Larson will put this one away. Question. Cal is trying to figure out, and I'm sure, I'm sure they know the answer if they can recognize it, is then how do you attack that 3D zone? What do you use to attack 3D? Well, I think first and foremost, Tom, the reason why it's not working is they haven't established their running game. I mean, they have not established any sort of play action game at all. And it doesn't matter when you get into the zone, whether you're playing cover two, cover three, the safety play is so important. And we talked off the top about Clint Kubiak, Mike Pagnotta, and the importance on this defense. And these safeties have played so well. And without that consistent threat of a running game, you allow the safeties to be actively involved in the game. And so much of the game is about angles and position. They're in position to make plays and make the throws more difficult for Nate Longshore because they don't have to be around the line of scrimmage. Steve Stannard's defense having a great afternoon here against Mighty Cap. 
Haney on the rollout, dumps it underneath, finds Johnny Walker. Walker takes a hit and then lurches forward for a couple of extra after Bernard Hicks had him wrapped up at the ankles. And that extra effort, that extra lunge is enough for a first down for the Rams. And you ask me, Tom, why do you consistently run that three yards and that run? Well, here's why you do it again. You show the same action. You're going to hand it off to the left side of the offensive line, right? No, nope, you don't hand it off. You bootleg out. The Cal defense so concerned about getting off blocks and getting there. You use their aggressiveness against them, and it's a nice gain and another first down on first down play. And so Haney stays hot. 12 for 15 now passing. There's Bell. Bell with a little pause, stutter step, and he takes it for an eight and a half yard gain. The same play, Tom, in the first half that was two yards is now eight yards. It's nothing fancy, it's nothing simple. Little zone blocking. Kyle Bell goes to the left, cuts back to the right. Offensive line stays on their block. Bell reads, finds the open hole, bursts through it, second and short. Another thing that Kyle Bell does very well that they had a hard time getting Gartrell Johnson to do as the featured back last year is reading that zone play. And so Haney uses a timeout here as they face second and two. He didn't like the look he got from Cal. First timeout of the second half for Colorado State. We'll step away and take the break with them. The Rams facing second and two in a six-point game when we get back to Fort Collins. Cal on top of Colorado State, 20 to 14. The Rams with the ball as we return, facing a second and two. What's going on in Football Nation right now? Find out on Game Room coming up next year on CSCB. Our crew tracking all the live games and breaking down everything that's happened with attitude and inside information. Game Room, Football Nation's most important opinions, ours only on CSTV. Big, big day in college football. The Cornhuskers found a win. Trev is happy. 20 to 17 on the road. Wake. Second and two. Here's Bell. And he fights forward. He gets a great spot. He ran through Warrell Williams. After Williams got his hands on him, and it will be a Colorado State first down. You know, Tom, I don't want to make too much of this either because I think that Dave Lay, the co-offensive coordinator, mentioned he does want to get Gartrell Johnson some more carries in the game. But I'm going to tell you as a former player, if you play a lot and suddenly you find yourself on the sideline, you want to get back in there. And I think that Kyle Bell is running harder now than he did in the first quarter. Maybe a little message sent. Just ran through that tackle that time. Bell is out for a full series in the second quarter. And there's a pick thrown by Haney. It's Anthony Felder. And Felder races down the sideline, cuts it back in. And pardon me, it's Justin Moye. And Moye is still fighting through to the 26. So Moye playing behind Follett at the strong sideline backer, the senior from Modesto, hauls in the second interception of the day from Caleb Haney. Just the second mistake all day from Caleb Haney, but a costly one. He goes back, looks left, looks off the defense, never saw Justin Moye, who does a terrific job from his linebacker position of dropping back into coverage and a very athletic play as he goes up and brings it down. And Moya's dad, Jeff, was on Cal's 1975 team that won a conference championship. So one 16 intercepted by the other 16. They're backing him up 15 yards. See another unsportsmanlike conduct penalty against Cal. And here's the point. This is a top 10 team. This is a team that feels like that November 10 matchup against USC will determine the Pac-10, maybe a chance to Play the BCS game, who knows, maybe go all the way for the national championship. Some of the things that have happened today cannot happen. Great teams don't make some of the mistakes that Cal has made today. Offensive line penalties at crucial situations and now a crucial 15-yard penalty in a dogfight in the fourth quarter on the road against a team like Colorado State. Six penalties for Cal, taking them back 35 yards total. And Longshore. Audibles at the line, signals to his two receivers at the top, Hawkins and Jackson. Looking that way, Jackson breaks off his route and will be forced out of bounds by Joey Rux. That was the same play we saw before, he's sending Hawkins deep, and Deshaun just kind of sits down with that cushion. Now, Tom, I, I got to tell you, if, if I'm Cal, I would call that play every play. I mean, you take Deshaun Jackson, you put him out wide. I don't care if they're playing man. I don't play it. 
care if they're playing zone. So far, these corners of Colorado State are giving a lot of cushion. I understand why you're talking about the speed. Just get it into his hands. The only problem is Longshore has misfired on the long ball a couple of times to both Hawkins and Jackson coming off that same play. Sean Jackson in motion. Give to the fullback for the first time today. Fighting forward will be short of the first down, and that will bring third and short. Tommy Hill with the stop, and that's a first touch for Will Tafoa. Tommy Hill almost seemed like he was surprised. <laughs> I don't think that they planned on working on the fullback play too many times this week, but did a nice job of staying home, and boom, suddenly there was the fullback setting up a very important third and short. Third and one for Cal. Down to Bess in the backfield. And Bess takes the pitch, and here he goes for a first down and dragged down by Clint Kubiak, son of Gary, the Texans coach, who was a longtime Broncos assistant. And Clint Kubiak back playing after going through hip surgery in May. He's the John Lynch in this Tampa 2 defense. It's almost impossible to stop that play. You show him the action with the fullback to the right side, quick pitch outside to a guy who can run a 10 300 yard dash. You get him to the outside, only has to go a couple yards. Good first down that time for Jeff Tedford's offense. Picks up eight. And the two tight ends. Mora on the left, Stevens on the right. We're set back in the game for Cap. Pardon me, that's Montgomery. Play action to Montgomery. Now looking deep again, and that one is incomplete. No flag on the play. Looking for Hawkins, and Hawkins thought he got bumped by Joey Rux. What did the coaches tell us yesterday? Joey Rux got the pass interference against Colorado because he was face guarding. And they said, yes. now in college football, as long as you're making a play on the ball, they won't throw the flag. Yeah, we'll take a look at the end of the play here. Why don't they throw the ball, the flag on him? He's looking back at the quarterback trying to make a play on the ball. And coaches and Coach Standard told us, trying to take advantage a little bit of that rule. Look, if you're simply telling us we just got to turn around, you can be pretty physical as you're turned around trying to, quote, make a play on the ball. And Rux did get his hand on that one. So second and ten now. Going to Hawkins again. Open field stop made with help from Magnata and Joey Rux once again. You know, one thing that Steve Standard, that defensive coordinator, told us again, Tom, was how they just was so important to his defense to limit the big plays. I mean, they understand when you have an offense like Cal, they're going to move the ball. This is what you call limiting the, the big plays. They complete the pass. Joey Rux, nice job in the open field, coming up and making the tackle. And Jake Galusha in there helping out Rux. Rux. Off a senior party at Dorsey High School in West Los Angeles Community College has stepped up big against his home state team. Punctual gets rid of it quickly. Knocked away by Rux again, and there's a flag coming in at the end of the play. And there might be offsides on Mike Pagnotta. Sonny Lubick is out on the field. What's that flag for? He wants to know. A great coverage by Rux. Offside, number 51 of the defense, five-yard penalty. Third down will be repeated. Jeff Heretic out of Atwood, Kansas, in western Kansas, jumped. They're going to bring a blitz with Mike Pagnotta at safety. There he is right there. I don't know about 51. I think they have ah, 51-13. Colorado State trying to come with some pressure that time, forcing Nate Longshore to get rid of the ball. Mike Pagnotta jumps off sides. Pagnotta missed a couple of games last year, three games at the torn MCL. Put on 15 pounds in the offseason, back strong. Had a pick against Colorado last week. Third and a very short one. I mean, it is tiny. Longshore might just keep this one himself. There he goes. There's the surge from the offensive line and a first down and more. And they're blocking all the way past the whistle. Taking the officials down. It was Alex Mack that time who bowled over a CSU defender and a guy in stripes. Well, that's what the Colorado State coaches told us that they were prepared for. This offensive line plays to the final whistle. 
Got Gary Crum, the umpire. Boom. First and 10 Bears at the 12 yard line. And I got to tell you, if I had an offensive line, that's the way I'd coach him, too. If you don't hear a whistle, you block until you hear a whistle. First and 10, they can get a first down inside the five. They need to get to the three. And they keep it on the ground. This is Montgomery. And Montgomery inside for a first down to the one. No, James Montgomery, a redshirt freshman at Rancho Cordova, all state performer, parade all American coming out of Cordova High School. A lot of weapons to these Bears. Well, we talked about this Colorado State defense not missing tackles that time. You got to miss tackle. Jake Podorf comes up, meets Montgomery in the hole, and Montgomery slips the tackle and gets all the way inside the two. Now trying to extend a six point lead. Best doing the blocking. And Montgomery is in. Touchdown, Cal. James Montgomery, his first touchdown of the year. His first career score for the redshirt freshman. Tom, it's so difficult as a defensive player. You've played your heart out all day. And so difficult to come back into the game after you've had a couple of stops. Emotionally, you've played well. And then the offense turns the ball over to come back in and try to get a stop. Good job that time by Cal, especially if it's offensive line reasserting itself and scoring off the turnover. Jordan K boots it through. He's had a strong day. Forsett, Best, they've all, Tafoa have all gotten touches. Now James Montgomery with his second carry of the day plunges in for the Golden Bears. Twenty-seven fourteen, Cal out in front of Colorado State. Ten twenty to go in the fourth quarter, and now this uh, Cal team taking advantage of a couple of Colorado State mistakes. Two forty-six off the clock at that time took eight plays before Montgomery took it in for the Golden Bears. And you, you just look at some of the missed opportunities for Colorado State, giving the ball back on a couple of interceptions and a fumble. And you Bears get, using it to the full advantage. Yeah, you, you give a team like Cal that many opportunities, you know. Uh, but that that was probably the best dri uh, drive of the game for them. Eight play drive, used a lot of different guys, but again, off a turnover. Good looking kick takes it into the end zone, and a touchback for Colorado State. And so Caleb Haney back to run the offense for Colorado State. We talked early, Trav, about how Colorado State really started to. Kind of get some momentum offensively. Now some of these mistakes, Haney with the pick in the end zone, and then that last one, it, you kind of feel that starting to leak away from it. Leak away a little bit. And again, we've talked how this team is built. And 27 to 14, they're not built in a way to come back. I mean, we talked about Caleb Haney not being the kind of guy that's going to sit in the shotgun and throw. But Caleb Haney's really had a pretty good day with the exception of two mistakes. This was the first one down on the goal line, going in the score, throws the interception. Here gets the fumble. Of course, that's not his fault. And then again throws the interception, Justin Moye picks off. And so they go back to Bell, and Bell brought down by Cody Jones and Haney. It's only misfired on four passes. One, though, was at the goal line. Two picks, 122 yards through the air. Last year, last week, pardon me, threw 229 against Colorado. And you think Colorado, well, what do they have? They're a much better team this year than what Dan Hawkins had last year in Boulder. Yeah, they certainly are. It's pretty difficult to judge a team by week one, just like yeah. Cal and Tennessee. You know, we don't know how how well Tennessee is going to play down the road. We don't know you know, Cal and Colorado could go out and win the Big 12 North. You never know. Bell again stays on his feet. Zach Follett with the hit. And junior from Clovis brings him down. Follett, first team freshman All-American a couple years ago. Now as a junior, as a Benaric Award candidate. I would say, Tom, in watching this Cal defense, uh, the obvious strength of this defense is their three linebackers. I mean, they, uh, they've they made some adjustments here in the second half, more downhill, attacking blockers at the line of scrimmage, not three yards down on the line. Anthony Felder, Justin Moye, Morel Williams, all playing very well. Ball tipped, and that one is hauled in by Walker right at the marker. And the spot looks like will be a first down. Great concentration by Johnny Walker. 
First down, Colorado State. See Haney here just looking left. Feels a little pressure in the middle. Big fella gets his hand up. That Malele is a nice job of getting his hand up, but not quite enough on it. And Johnny Walker comes down with a first down catch. Walker heads out back to the sideline, and Haney surveys the defense of Cal. And Kyle Bell behind him in a one back set. Haney, flush. Tries a lob on the go, and that is over the head of George Hill. Student section on that side wanted a flag. Now Cal defensively, Tom, obviously with a 27 to 14 lead, under nine minutes here in the fourth quarter, not wanting to give up the big play. They're simply just going to drop back into a three deep zone, maybe a little cover two, keep everything in front of them. And so at this point, Caleb Haney is just going to have to take what this defense gives him. Middle of the field, five and six yards, but really not a lot out there. Certainly miss a guy like Corey Sperry in this situation. They certainly have missed him big time in the second half. Adam Seymour is in a tight end for Colorado State now. Corey Sperry injured his knee in the second quarter and left the game. What a grab by Walker at midfield. Thomas Deku on the coverage for Cal and Johnny Walker, a California native, hauls in back to back passes to move the chains. Just right down the seam that time and Deku sitting in the seam, but Caleb does a nice job of in between. That's a difficult throw. That's cover two. That's the middle linebacker whose job, Warrell Williams, is to get back in the seam and make it difficult for the quarterback. That time, Caleb Haney does a nice job of dropping it in between the middle linebacker and Thomas Deku. Haney again facing the pressure, and what a hit in the open field. It was Justin Moye again. Now, Justin Moye and these linebackers have been very, very active today. And the athleticism, I think, of Cal, I think offensively it was there. It's just a good job of Justin Moye of getting out in front of the blocker and making the play. Nick Alotta got flagged for holding. They declined. Second and 15 now. After the They'll put eight seconds back on the clock here. Facing a second and 15. This is going to sound um, probably kind of funny to you, Tom, but I think this is probably the best case scenario for Jeff Tedford to come in here to struggle, to not play well, but to still get the win. Because so many times it's about a message to your team. You know, next week, it's not a big time game, not a big time opponent. You're trying to send a message to your team that we have to play well every week to meet our goals. Haney dumps it off underneath. George Hill has room to run. Here goes Hill, finally knocked out of bounds. Brandon Hampton shoved him out, and what an opportunity again for Colorado State as they move the chains on a second of 15. Bring Warrell Williams that time on the blitz, and. When you're getting some man coverage, what you do is you take your wide receivers and you run away from the defender. And that time, George Hill ran away from his defender. It's an easier throw and difficult coverage. Hill out of Corona High School runs a 4 4 40. He's down at the bottom of your screen. Haney, pressure again, tries to draw, and he gets swallowed up by Cameron Jordan. Freshman out of Chandler, Arizona. Some chatting going on after the play from Matt Malele. You see the number 97, Cameron Jordan, as he comes off the edge. And it's a good job of using his hands. That's a freshman. And they love this kid. I mean, that's what I'm talking about, the athleticism and the different kind of athlete that they're getting in here. I mean, we've already talked about Deshaun Jackson, of course, job at best, both turned down USC. To go to Cal, they're starting to get those guys on defense as well. Great coverage by Shidquan Thompson as they try to fit it inside to Deion Morton. And Thompson matched him step for step. Sidquan's obviously an interesting story last year as a freshman. Remember when he played against Tennessee, had the cast on his hand and found himself in space trying to cover Robert Meacham. And 
The result was 42 and 80 yard touchdowns for Robert Meacham. Comes back last week. He was looking for redemption. He played so well, playing with a lot more confidence than Sid Quan Thompson. Had to start every game last year, expected to be a backup, but when Tim Mixon went down with a knee injury, he was thrust into his starting role. Here comes the blitz right up the middle, picked up nicely by the Rams, and what a hit! Laying on Walker that time, and Zach Follett helps him to his feet after putting him on his backside. And Cal now is just coming with a blitz, three man line, bringing Warrell Williams as that fourth blocker, and then actually blitzer, then actually bring number 18, Mike Muhammad, as well, so you get your fifth rusher playing zone behind it. So forcing Caleb Haney to get rid of the ball. Ooh, that gives me a headache. Ezef knocked it away. Oh. Walker's still in the game now. What do they say? Sit down in the zones. Don't run through zones. Fourth and nine for Colorado. Stayed off the hands of Damon Morton that time. And Colorado State will turn it over on downs with 6.39 remaining. Caleb threw that ball while he was still looking at the back of Damon Morton and Morton turned around and really wasn't ready. The ball was there before he was really ready and but again that's a, a pass that could have been caught and should have been caught by Damon Morton. Uh, well it won't get any easier for Colorado State. They have to after a week off have to go down to Houston take on last year's CUSA champs and then at TCU to close out the month of September. And you, you could be seeing a team, Colorado State, that at the end of September doesn't have a notch in the win column, but is a much better team than that their record would indicate if they get there. I'm not saying that they're going to lose at Houston. They have a great chance to, to get the job done against the Cougars, but there's certainly no gimmies in the early part of their schedule. No, but the problem is, and I think what Coach Lubick talks about is, remember, they lost Kyle Bell last year, but they started 4-1. and one. Yeah. They lost their final seven. What he wants to see is some leadership and toughness that when they do lose, they don't go in the tank. Javid Best, the freshman, running through green shirts. Here goes Javid Best. And Javid Best proves that he is. The freshman takes it in. 64 yard scamper. Wow, can they strike quick. It's just poor tackling. You try to take nothing away from Javid Best and a terrific run. And he's got good speed. It's that play again. Fake inside, pitch to the outside. But take it to look, number of guys. I mean, Darrell Williams has a chance. Four or five guys just reaching out, not wrapping up. and. Sometimes that happens though as a defender you're playing against a guy that's so fast you, you don't take the proper angle you don't wrap up the right way the tackling in space just doesn't get done. Extra point is get good once again job at best James Montgomery on the ground for Cal Justin for carrying the load and now it's best a 64 yard sprint after running through guys takes it to the end zone of Cal looking to get out with a win. CSTV Football Nation has been brought to you by Sirius Satellite Radio. Hear the sports, talk, news, entertainment, and 100% commercial free music you want. Sirius Satellite Radio, the best radio on radio. And also by Under Armour. The advantage is undeniable. And tonight's dinner, make it nice and fresh. 20 point lead for Cal, and that's uh, just outside the stadium here. And Nate Longshore and company came to town and they just came here on business. Let's get a win, let's get out. They're up by 20. With 5.49 remaining. Andrew Larson to kick. Good looking kick from Andrew Larson. Deion Morton a couple of yards into it. And Morton swallowed up at the 12 yard line. Deion Morton carries for the round. And so here comes uh, Colorado State Moye, another big stop. These guys, this guy's been all over the field tonight, had the big interception return. And it's not just the three starting linebackers, not just Felder, Williams, and Follett. Those second string guys uh, taking advantage today. Yeah, lots of speed, lots of athleticism, guys wanting to get on the field. And 
Felder, Warrell Williams, and Moye Muhammad had a beautiful play on the interception. So, as I talked about, I think the speed and athleticisms of their linebacker is really what separates this defense from years past. Now, remember, they had a good one last year. I mean, a great one. Desmond Bishop was an outstanding middle linebacker for him last year. This is Walker again. Five catches on the day for Johnny Walker, the senior from Lancaster. Chris Conti, the freshman from Loyola High School in L.A. with the tackle. Walker's had a, had a busy, busy day for Colorado State. The Rams quickly get to the line, facing a second and four. Haney rolls out. Flag on the play. He'll take a hit. From Warrell, Warrell Williams, excuse me. See what this flag is all about. Holding number 60 of the offense. 10 yard penalty. First down will be repeated. Would have moved the chains instead. It's backed up once again, and that's Adrian Martinez. Tom, you remember back to the first half in crucial situations. Now, the game's sort of gotten away from Colorado State a little bit here, but when they had to pass, how many times between the hashes is where they attack that defense with Corey Sperry? Interesting to me that they haven't at least tried. I mean, certainly they have to be uh, tight ends on their roster that can catch the ball, but they've went away completely from the tight end position. They've tried to attack on the outside, and... See the numbers the first half, 9 of 11 efficient, but he did have that crucial turnover down there on the goal line. And again, Corey second Sp half, another turnover. Corey Sperry, two catches, 16 yards, and left midway through the second quarter with a knee injury. And, and you might get a situation where you rely on a tight end so much. Like Sperry, he's the guy that you look to when you're looking at your tight end. I know he's had Seymour on a couple of routes and Koala, can you just has been zeroed in on guys like uh, Morton and Walker instead. Well, I guess the point is this. They, they just don't have the speed on the outside to cause any, create any separation from these Cal defenders. I mean, they haven't been able to consistently, anything they've gotten have been wide receivers that have been dragging across the middle. They haven't been able to just line up and create separation on the outside with their wide receivers. Officials making sure they get the spot right. Jeff Tedford was on the field watching over their shoulders. Sperry left midway through the second quarter took the pads off and is uh, gonna just watching here for more than a half bell gain of two on the pass to the running back out of Kingsburg Colorado Bell has fought back from a torn ACL caused him to miss all of last season and he said you know last week against Colorado maybe he's still knocking some of that rust off getting back into the swing of things well, I mean, you carry the ball 40 times and, and you don't hurt yourself, you know you're ready. So mentally, I think that Kyle Bell is all the way back. And there's a tight end. Adam Seymour loses his helmet as he goes out of bounds. He's at Alta Loma, California. He just came back from a foot injury, missed most of fall, and just started practicing last week before the Colorado game. And that's a big question mark for Colorado State. When can we get Corey Sperry back on the field? Will he be back? Next week, will he be back uh, after the off week? Certainly coming at a good time before they head to Houston. If not, they need production from guys like Kowalik and Seymour. Here's Bell. Met uh, by the linebacker. Mike Muhammad. Just another great play by Mike Muhammad. And what Cal's doing now is a three-man line, and they're blitzing Warrell Williams, making him the fourth rusher every time. And that time, Mike Muhammad Fights off the block, gets off the block, and makes a solo tackle. No second down. Haney going deep. Hasn't taken too many shots downfield, and he throws a strike to Damon Morton, who will take it the rest of the way. And Morton with his first touchdown of the year for Colorado State. What a terrific throw that time by Caleb Haney. That time has enough time. The offensive line gives him enough time and we talked about creating separation once again Cal three mine three man rush bringing another guy off to the outside with the linebackers but there's some separation for you as Damon Morton gets 
to the outside and in for the touchdown. 67 yards from Haney. Damon Morton, senior from Riverside, California, twin of brother Dion. Here's Morton. They're just sitting down in zones and. Darian Hagen, the red shirt freshman, you never let a receiver run past his zone. Darian Hagen allows Morton to get deeper than the zone and a strike from Caleb Haney. You know, we were talking to Bob Gregory, the defensive coordinator at Cal, and saying, you know, statistically, sometimes maybe this defense doesn't measure up. Last year, they were eighth in the Pac-10 in total defense. And he said, let me just promise you something. I'm not like other defensive coordinators. If, in our opinion, our defense is in control and our team is in control, we will play the backups. And we've certainly seen a lot of backups. Darian Hagan in this game playing for Sid Quan Thompson gets beat on a zone, a three-deep zone, allowing Damon Morton to run past the zone. Yeah, folks here in this state familiar with that name, Darian Hagan. He's a estranged father, quarterback uh, at Colorado. Led him to a national title game, national championship. I'd prefer not to talk about Colorado at all, right? 1990. <laughs> How do you think I feel? I went to Missouri. I was there for the fifth down game. I'm not too happy either. But you were used to losing. Thank you. Thank you. That makes me feel better. Here's an onside opportunity for Colorado State. The ball is loose, and the Rams fall on it. Covered by Colorado State just past midfield. Jason Smith kicked that one perfectly, and it's covered by Curtis Cornelson. Got a great bounce that time. Cornelson was all over it. He used to have that old artificial turf, you know, that back in the 70s and 80s, and you could always get that great bounce. It's more difficult on this field turf, but that time, a very good bounce. Get that ball up high, you got an opportunity. All right, now an opportunity for Caleb Haney and company. And John Mosier is in the backfield for Colorado State. Play action to him. Haney stops and will chuck this one out of bounds. Knocked down again, pressure from Rulon Davis. Davis spent a few years in the United States Marine Corps. He was an avionics technician and was right in the thick of things in Fallujah. And there's Rulon there. Good athleticism. Gets to the outside. It took Shelly Smith and actually pulled him out. His job was to block Rulon Davis. But it was interesting, as you mentioned, all of his experiences over in Iraq. He says, you know, if I ever twist my ankle or something, he says, no, I've been through so much, you know. Twisting an ankle or knee doesn't bother me at all. He missed a solid year after getting in a motorcycle accident on the 10 freeway. And they go deep again. And that one is hauled in. What a grab by George Hill, challenging that secondary one more time. You mentioned challenging that secondary. It's not a backup this time. It's Marcus Isef. It's a starting. Rover and Caleb Haney just goes up top, takes a chance. It's just a great individual effort by George Hill. And Marcus Isef never turns around, never makes a play on the ball. So the Rams knocking on the door here with three and a half minutes to go in the fourth. Bell, the back takes it to the three, gain of one, second and goal for Colorado State. They've already recovered one onside kick. Haney, no huddle, wants his guys on the line. Let's hurry up. Clock ticking, moving to three minutes now. <laughs> Bell again. Bell to the end zone. Touchdown, Colorado State. Another chance to fire the cannon and don't go anywhere. We've got a game with three minutes to go. Tom, it's so difficult as a defensive player to turn it back on. You got a 20 point lead. You're firmly in control. You start rotating in the backups, the second, third team guys. Suddenly the starters are on the sideline. Coaches are saying, get back in there. Suddenly you've got to reassert yourself and try to turn it back on. It all started with the onside kick from Jason Smith, covered by Curtis Cornelson, and then Kyle Bell takes it to the end zone. 
A six point game with 254 to go. You've already covered one onside kick. You got three minutes to go. And you got a guy like Kyle Bell running the ball for you. That's what you call hitting the hole that time. Hits the hole, gets the pads low, and just runs through the tackle of Rulon Davis. Second touchdown today for Kyle Bell. And you onside it again. Seems like a no-brainer. Well, it's just under three minutes left to go in the game. We've had a great success the last time, but Hans team will take the field for Cal. Cal is expecting the onside kick. Colorado State with two timeouts remaining. The Bears have all three left. And Smith will set it up on the hash mark. Oh, what a job. And what a game this would be for Sonny Lubick and company. Thomas kind of interesting after the third quarter about half the fans here at Hughes Stadium went home. Here's the kick a pooch kick. And that one will go out of bounds. At the 35 yard line. And so three timeouts remaining for Colorado State and their defense. Well, stay with us. More big time football coming your way. This is a regional battle from the Tar Heel State as North Carolina travels down the road to the eastern side of the state to take on ECU tonight from Dowdy Ficklin Stadium. The Butch Davis era got off to a good start with James Madison. Can they match up with an ECU team, which is favored in this game after seeing? Such a strong performance last, last week in Blacksburg, Virginia. ECU and North Carolina coming up later tonight on CSTV. Cal salted the game away against Tennessee behind the running of Justin Forsett, who had 92 yards rushing in the fourth quarter. And Forsett gets his hands on the ball here, and he is dragged down by Clint Kubiak. Timeout called for, stopping the clock at 2.45. Sonny Lubick was immediately in the face of the line judge. Stopping the play after that game will leave second in about six and a half. They talk about Clint Kubiak and how smart he is. And what a great job that time. Open field tackling, a tackling, attacking Justin Forsett that time. Sure handed tackle. There he is with a good angle, wrapping him up and bringing down Justin Forsett. 13 carries, 59 yards, four for set. Kubiak had seven tackles against Colorado. He was the leading tackler for the Rams last year, had 19 against Air Force's run heavy offense. Put a lot of pressure on their safeties here at Colorado State. They're expected to recognize the run, fill on the run. And yet be smart enough to not get sucked up on play action to help out in that cover two. Well, the students are still here in this off campus stadium but some of the other faithful gave up their faith early. Hit the road perhaps time to turn that car around be here for the victory celebration if you're a Colorado State fan. There you go. There's a faithful, huh? They're not leaving. Second and six for set up the middle. Shy of the, four, of the first down. This will be third and a yard and a half. Timeout taken again by Colorado State. Deshaun Jackson, the threat for Cal, has zero touches in the second half. They went to him a couple of times, but Nate Longshore in the third quarter was just off, a little too strong with a couple of those passes. And Jackson. With 109 yards of offense in the first half, including a 73 yard catch and run right through the heart of the Colorado State defense, has been silenced here in the second half. In the first half, we saw two reverses to Deshaun Jackson, and it seems like the second half, it's been about Javid Best. That little show action to the strong side, the quick pitch back to the weak side, and just allow him to use his speed. And well, you know, when Colorado State goes back and looks at this film, they're going to be mad at themselves. They okay. missed tackles, a couple interceptions at crucial situations, including one in the red zone, another that led to a Cal score. Here we go, third and two. 
James Montgomery is in the cow backfield behind Will Tafoa. Two tight ends. Montgomery. First down, cow. Colorado State out of timeouts. Well, we talked about that game last week and how Tennessee had really sort of made a run there at the end of the game. They headed back within seven points and the team really responded. The offensive line responded and they dominated physically that last 10 to 12 minutes. And so a very important third down run there to get the first down. 2.20 to go. Stay with the jumbo, fellas. Montgomery. A couple of yards, the most important aspect, that clock continuing to roll. Next week it'll be Louisiana Tech and first-year head coach Derek Dooley for the Bulldogs, son of legendary Georgia head coach Vince Dooley, former athletic director at the University of Georgia. Jeff Tedford. Get out of here. He might have gotten a smile a moment ago. Glance at the scoreboard, see that Oregon is hammering Michigan right now. Well, Preseason polls are pretty accurate. <laughs> Second down, Montgomery again. Taking care of the football. First down. James Montgomery. Trevor, like a lot of things we saw at Colorado State today, mm -hmm. defensively, they really stymied Cal and confused him. 34 points is a decent number, but you consider what they did in the first half. And then secondly, the fight and the grit, the determination for Colorado State to fight their way back into this game. And that's something, quite frankly, that Sonny Lubick's team did not show last year when they lost seven straight. Yeah, they really didn't. They didn't have the leadership. And guys like Jesse Nading, you know, talk openly about, and even Caleb Haney. I think that Caleb Haney lost some confidence last year. They didn't have a running game and started turning the ball over, and it just sort of got away from Coach Lubick and his staff a little bit those last seven games. And, of course, then he lose to Colorado. This is now nine straight losses. But if you're honest about it, you'd have to say this team plays hard every single play. Uh, they just got beat by a better team. And Cal certainly wasn't perfect at all today. They'll go back and watch the film, and they'll certainly be almost embarrassed at some of the things that, that they did on the field. So they're yes. lucky. Cal is lucky, and Coach Tedford is lucky. He can use this game as a, a great teaching tool to his team, especially next week on Louisiana Tech. Well, you mentioned that uh, those preseason polls aren't worth the paper that they're printed on. What about Cal? Do they look like the 10th best team in the country? I think it's pretty hard to, to make that judgment the week after a huge win against Tennessee. They certainly have the skill and talent. They didn't look like the 10th ranked team in the country today. Now time now to take a look at our serious satellite radio player of the game. And it was a, a group of guys that deserved this one that turned around the game for Cal. And that's their defense, specifically that linebacking core. And a lot of the linebacking core was outstanding. You see the stats there, but it wasn't just one, it was all of them. I mean, Anthony Felder, Mike Muhammad, Laura Williams had a couple big hits. Zach Follett did a nice job, and Justin Moye as well. So the speed, look at that athleticism there of Justin Moye going up, simple drop back in the zone, go up. The athleticism that those linebackers have, I think that's the strength of their defense. So a strong performance today for Cal. Fighting off a scrappy Colorado State team. It's pulled within six. And the key was that uh, third down pickup to salt the game away for Cal. And once again, they turned to their running game. But it was James Montgomery getting a ton of carries late in this one in the fourth quarter. Montgomery had a touchdown. Nate Longshore, you know, he wasn't perfect today, that's for sure. Misfired on a few opportunities for Cal. And once again, they put 34 points on the board in this uh, offense of Jeff Tedford. Pulls in another win. Coach Tedford joins us now. Coach, thanks for being with us. I think defense, uh, the story of the game for your squad today. Yeah, we didn't play very well. Uh, you know, I thought in the second half they came out and they, they stiffened up a little bit, but then we gave up huge plays in the sec in the fourth quarter with deep balls, and uh, that's just not good enough. you got to give credit to Colorado State, though. They kept battling and made some plays, and but we didn't play very good today. Coach, how can you use this game as a teaching tool to your team the rest of the way? 
Well, I think it's obvious. It's obvious that you need to tackle. It's obvious you need to play four quarters in all phases of the game. And uh, we didn't do that today. And we're very fortunate to have a win right here. We can play a lot better. Uh, I think it's a great, great learning tool, as you said, for us right now. All right, Coach, thanks for your time. Congratulations on the win. That's Cal head coach Jeff Tedford. His team moves to 2-0 and in his still young season. We've got more to come from Fort Collins. Stay with us. CSTV Football Nation is brought to you by BF Goodrich. BF Goodrich tires take control. By Burger King, to remind you to have it your way. And by Liberty Mutual, responsibility, what's your policy? And we're ready for kickoff in Fort Collins. Tank ranked Cal taking on Colorado State. Two coaches who know about winning as we take a look at the coaching matchup presented by Liberty Mutual. Jeff Tedford, the head coach at Cal, and Sonny Lubick on the sideline for Colorado State. Tedford in his sixth season, he's resumed play calling duties today. And Sonny Lubick in his 15th season at Colorado State, 105 wins, the second winning as coach here in Fort Collins. And the field here is named after him at Hughes Stadium. We're ready to get things underway. And guess what? Cal will receive this kickoff. Jason Smith ready to put it in the air. Brandon Hampton and Lavelle Hawkins set to return for Cal. We've talked a lot about Deshaun Jackson. We will continue to, but these guys, Hampton and Hawkins, can also bring it back. And a great kick at altitude for Jason Smith and rare in the college game today to see a touchback. And so Cal will start at its 20-yard line. And they start with Nate Longshore under center. Had a great game last week against Tennessee, 241 passing.